Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary Owen with the Get Sub Podcasts. I got a special guest this week. My boy D-Ray Davis is here. Now, he's going to be coming in hot. He's already waiting to get on. He's one of the few brothers. He logged in early <laughs> as we go live. But I was talking about last week, uh, before I brought on Tiffany, uh, I got a, a little deep last week. But like I said, I'm trying to connect with my daughter every week. And clearly our tastes in music are different. And I didn't realize I became middle-aged till I started listening to some of the songs she listens to. So I got her giving me different rappers that she likes. And I'll pull up some of their songs, and I'm trying to figure out the lyrics to some of these songs. So she did tell me her favorite rapper of all time right now is Kid Cudi, which I felt good about because I think he's pretty positive. But she also likes NBA Youngboy. So I pulled up these lyrics... From one of NBA Young Young Boy song called uh, "Never Broke Again." Uh, okay, and I'm gonna try to dissect what NBA Young Boy's saying in this song. Face his dome, won't catch him. Slipping, creep up on him. I got all this money, don't mean nothing. It ain't a question. I'ma dump it. So think twice before you dream of taking something. He hit the kill switch when he turn up on them meds. He lose his mind. He put five on top of your head. On them Zans, we catch him walking like he dead. He don't give a fuck if it's his bloody zip him, yeah. I'm lost. There's one thing about the lyrics. There's no G's. So when I say taking something it's taking something it's it's it, there's just okay there's a lot to go there's a lot to break down face his dome won't catch him <clears throat> that means i think you're face to face and you're not he's running from you slipping creep up on him so i gotta sneak up on this guy because he's on top of his shit i got all this money don't mean nothing which means i'm rich but i don't give a fuck it ain't a question i'm gonna dump it i think that's bullets so think twice before you dream of taking something so if you trying to take something from me rob me think twice because i'm gonna dump it i will shoot you he hit the kill switch when he turned on their meds which means probably somebody's on drugs they ain't thinking right he lose his mind he put five on top of your head i don't know if that means five bullets or five thousand dollars on top of your head i'm not sure about that one on them Zans, we catch him walking like he dead. That means he's on drugs, so he's probably walking around like a zombie. He's not. He's out of it. He don't give a fuck if it's his bloody zip him. Yeah, I, I, dude, don't give a shit about dying, basically, because I think that's zip him up, like zip him up in the the bag, and you're dead. What all this has to do, I don't know. That's that's a lot, especially I mean, a young boy is not even twenty one. And he's rapping about this stuff already. Can you imagine what he's seen in his life? Man. I don't even know where to go with that. I almost missed the hip hop, hip, hip, hippity hop songs. <laughs> that was a lot to unpack in that those two paragraphs of lyrics from NBA Youngboy. Now, I'll let you guys tell me if I was right on dissecting the lyrics. Or to the older listeners, ask your kids. Say, look, this is Gary's podcast. Tell me if Gary is right and the way he was thinking what those lyrics meant. That's the one thing about the internet. They will tell you immediately. I'll, I'll, be, I'll get called a dumbass because I didn't know what his lyrics meant. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyways, I, I don't, I don't want to keep this next guy waiting. He's a good friend of mine. D-Ray Davis is a yes. guest this week on the Get Some Podcast. <laughs> De- definitely a good friend. A good friend is somebody who you allow into your house during this pandemic. I mean, you won't let him drink out your shit, you know, paper cups and plastic cups and all that. But you still would allow me over. So I feel like I'm that kind of friend. Yeah, yeah. You definitely could come over to my house for sure. You're right. Um, so yeah, comedy, let, let's let's go back to comedy real quick in my green suit. Um, green eyes or green suit? That's green what I remember. Suit that I uh, had two ladies pay for separately. They didn't know they both were paying for that suit, the same comedy view suit launching my first TV appearance. And um, when I got done performing, I had aluminum foil 
on my buttons because I forgot to take it off from the cleaners. <laughs> so everybody so, so everybody at home was like, dang, look at that bling he got. <laughs> aluminum foil. Hold on. So if we go back to that tape, when you're on stage, your buttons have the foil on the outside? On the outside. On the buttons. <laughs> There's aluminum foil <laughs> on the buttons. Yep. <laughs> Looking like I'm blinging, too. And that's the only thing that- I worried about when I got back to the room. Now, how? Let me ask you. Now, back then, when we did, when I hosted Comic View and you went on Comic View the first time, and now, lot, now people know this. Maybe the novice people don't. Nobody was making any money. I mean, it, no, what were they, I, they were paying like one hundred fifty dollars. I just looked at right? it. I just found the uh, the paperwork for it. One hundred fifty bucks, and uh, you had to get yourself there, and hotel, and, and hotel, ground. and your own, and you had to pay for the groupies back then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> had to pay was for that everything. Now- Nothing was free. No, yeah, but... Now, was that your first time in L.A.? And it was my first time in L.A., yep. Yeah, because I think you told me, like, years later, you was like, you're like the first celeb I ever met. Yeah, you were. When I... I, I, I tried to go into your dressing room before the show. I knocked really? on the door. Yeah, I, like, knocked on the door. I was like, Gary... I was like, I, I lied. I was like, I know Gary. And it was like, no, you don't. They didn't let me in the room. It was pretty cool. And then... Uh, and then I, I said to that. myself... Can we curse on here? I don't know. Can we curse yeah, on here? Yeah, do whatever you want. I said, I said, why this motherfucker hosting? <laughs> oh, because I was he's, white? He's white, yeah. I had the straight white, black comedy, not done by white people. Only, uh, only white person I met was Honest John. Oh, God. <laughs> I see In passing, that was it. I had never seen a white person do their, work the crowd like that. You do, and, and to this day, I always tell people, the reason, I mean, other than us being friends, because you could put up with how I am as an asshole and, and and you tell people who I really am, you know, you know me, know me, but to this day, I love to tell people how great you are at comedy without trying to act, without trying to put on a persona to, to cross over or to act black or to give a certain kind of conversation just to get people's attention. And you're actually funny and you, your comedy just relates to, to those people. So I, I love that, man. Not, not the well, shift I, from what we're talking about. No, no, it's fine. Cause I always say like, as a comic, you don't choose your audience; they choose you. True. You can, side note, my side note on whatever you guys got going on in the background on the computer, my arm in the corner of my arm looks like an ass. So, every time, so if you saw me looking, it's because I thought some porn popped up because my arm was fat and it looks like a fat, fat ass. All right, go. Dear, you know, believe me, I know you. You do not need to watch porn. You're fine. I watch porn still for practice. Oh, for practice. Got it. <laughs> like, but <laughs> stamina. I watch porn still. Old well, listen, porn too. I still got DVDs. Fat well, black I, ass two and three. Oh, those are good ones. What? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> those no, girls got regular I, LA jobs now. They don't want nobody to see. They don't think people watch DVDs anymore. All right, sorry. Now we now there's a fans only page. That's what it is. Right. Now. That's oh, a new thing. Brilliant. It's like um, the drug like the drug dealer doesn't have to work for the drug lord anymore. Right. Like you ever watch like old episodes of The Wire? Yeah, and it's like it's like literally prehistoric drug dealing, pay phones, and even how they were tracking the drug dealers was prehistoric. If you watch the wire now, um, I'm glad we we shifted the porn real quick. Okay, go. Oh, completely, completely. Uh, we we just going back to choosing your audience, and I I, I appreciate the nice words you said about me because I always stand up for you too. Because I always say like when people like like uh, dude like he was an asshole to me. I said well. Let me ask you, where did you meet him and how did you meet him? I said, because if, if I know D-Ray, especially back in the day, D-Ray, he chased women, trying to meet girls. I said, if you met him at a club Impossible. and you're trying, to, you're trying to hem him up to get a, a, a word in about your career, <laughs> I go, that's not where he's at right there. That's not at where all. he's at. You know, you got to catch him at like Starbucks at like <laughs> noon. And even then... He's still gonna have his eye peeled. Like <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrible distraction, man. It's hereditary, unfortunately. But I still love that. Um, somebody told me a long time ago because I did, and you worked with, you did a movie with Eddie too, with Eddie Murphy, and I was talking to him, just having a regular conversation, and um, I was seeing like you know where his mind was, and it, it, he kept it really work. Like he kept it really work. Like he was having fun, but he kept it really work. And I told somebody, I was like, damn, you know, I was trying to like talk to Eddie, just you know, pick his brain. And he said, "Hey man, he don't he don't need no more friends." 
Like he's been in this business for how many years? He's not looking for a friendship. Like, don't be offended, but this motherfucker's fifty. Why would he need a new friend? And I'm like, I thought about it. I said, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't, I don't allow new friends. He's like, I've been knowing you forever, and I, and we can give advice to the young comics coming up, like business wise, and you know, if we have a moment or if we're in the midst of it, we talk like coaches sometimes. The ones we like, the ones we feel like there's potential to talk to. You know, there's, there's mm-hmm. to get through to. But as far as making a friend, I'm not trying to go bowling with nobody. Gary, you've been my friend for 20 years. We don't go to dinner unless we accidentally go to dinner. We don't like, like, oh, man, Gary hasn't called me during COVID, man. He doesn't care if I cough. Like, that's not what a real nah. friend is. And I think I'm just not, I'm, I'm not not approachable, but I'm always in that that mode of my mind. And sometimes people say my ADD is just, you know, it's, it's terrible, too. Like, you could be talking to me and I'll drift the hell off, you know. This was hard to do. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I feel like you're funny because last week, I asked you to do it last week, and then yeah, Tiffany Haddish, okay, Tiffany Haddish called, and she said I can only do it last week, was the only time I could get her. And her reasoning was funny, too. She goes, Gary, I'm just sick of getting made up. I could do audio, but I'm not doing no more visual stuff like this, because I got to get prepared. And I went, oh, uh, that's, and I, a, that's, a, that's, hey, man, that's their, that's. That's the issue that I'm glad I don't I don't deal with. I don't give a damn how I look. But as a woman, her audience, they see her a certain kind of way and they want to keep seeing her doing. Nobody want to see half a ponytail, Tiffany. But I love that you said uh, I love doing this to people. You said I-, I got Tiffany next week. And I said, Tiffany, who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the singer. The singer love, from the 90s. And I 80s. love that. I love being able. I love talking shit like that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a, oh, it was. <laughs> But you you dug on me though. You dug on me because I said I literally I booked you, I locked you for last week, and I'm not lying, thirty seconds after I locked you in, Tiff called, and I was just like, ah oh, shit. I had to call you right back. Like, Jerry, can you do it next week? Because Tiff can only do it this week. And then you was the way you hung up the phone was, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he's like, hey babe. Yeah, uh, Gary thinks Tiffany's bigger than me. So yeah. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary got a real start. Hey, yeah. you, whenever you're on a, a, something like this on the phone, you never have to curse the person out or anything. You just got to pretend you're talking to somebody else about it. You act like you're on the phone, like, all right, Gary, talk to you later. This motherfucker, I can't believe it. Yeah, Gary Gary thinks he's the shit. Yeah, he said, fuck us. All right, Gary, talk to you later. No, no. But, <laughs> hey, I had to get Tiff when I could get her. I mean, she's hot right now. So it's <laughs> extremely hot. <laughs> right. I was like this. Hey, D-Ray, no offense. <laughs> I remember like, I, I called can Tiffany. You do it next week? I, I had Tiffany um, booked with me for, um, I, I took her to Ontario. This is right before a Girl's Trip came out. And it, it had like maybe, uh, not right before, but like maybe six months before Girl's Trip came out. And I had her and DC Young Fly in Ontario with me. And that was like a home run. I'm like, oh shit, this is, this is great. Like tickets, I'm adding fucking four shows with, you know, and we do, a, you know, we do good. I had like two shows when I'm by myself, but they're like, their names on it and people like coming to see them. So Tiffany and um, DC are there and they did a great job. They rocked it. So while we're there, I booked Tiffany for my New Year's Eve show. I say, hey, I want to book you. And she told me a price. And right after when, when Girl Trip came out, I'm telling you, it was like crazy. And she called me back. It's like, yo, D, I still want to do it. And she was negotiating. I was like, nah, nah, you yeah. said this much. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I still, I, hey, hey, I said it five months ago. That's what it is. But even with that, man, you got to respect it, man. Yeah, but D-Ray, you have a gift. Here's here's D-Ray's gift in promoting and giving guilt trips. D-Ray will give you a guilt trip like you ain't believe. So with Tiffany calling you, knowing <laughs> her price should go up, knowing you should be paying her more, you will you will have her feeling like if you don't do New Year's Eve in Chicago, your career's ending. You will have somebody to fall like this. No, Tiff, you don't understand. This is it. If you don't do New Year's Eve in Chicago with me, there's no movies coming. There's nothing. No, it's you've more. It, of, it's more of a. You know, mine is more of a. You know, when you go anywhere across the country, you have to fly past Chicago, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how I'll be like. You want to never come to Chicago again for anything, hot dogs or anything? Those are the old, old, the old D Ray ties. All the drug dealers and gangbangers I know are dead, so I, I don't even know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> All the people that was your muscle yeah, is they're gone. Dead, they're old and dead. I'm like, what, what about what about Chubby G? Okay, he dead too. Oh, All right. shit. Oh, what about what about Bobby Lee? Oh, Bob, Bob, Bobby L gone. They killed Bob. Oh, Bobby killed True. True shot. Same day. Okay. Like everybody, 
I couldn't even, if I wanted to go back to selling drugs, I couldn't, I have no connects. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we was talk actually talking about promoting and shows was, uh, I had Lil Rel on like three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, the first time I met you was when D-Ray brought me to Riddles and you was passing out flyers at the mall. And you literally, D-Ray, you came up to me like, yeah, that's one of my young boys. And I was looking at you like, what are you, like 25? <laughs> like you got young boys? <laughs> like, you're young, dude. We're all young. We, we was moving it, man. We was moving it. Man. I just looked at some old pictures of Arell and Michi and Riddles was popping. Riddles was crazy. That was like. Yo. The, uh, I, I told him that I, went, I, did a, I did your Sunday night. Now, people don't know. D-Ray used to have this club in Chicago called Riddles. So he did Sunday nights there. So he always brought all the the comic view Def Jam comics. And I I went there one time and we added a third show. First it was one. Then we added a second like the night before. Mm-hmm. Then we get there the day of. I'm talking the night of. Usually when you add a third show at a comedy club, you make that phone call the day before. You make D-Ray added a third show at like 6 p.m. when the third show was going to start at midnight. Like he just added it six hours for the show. And... It was funny because you came to me and you're like, Gary, man, can you work with me on the third one? Because we don't know if it's going to sell out and da da da. And I'm, I remember I had a heckler the first show. I had a fist fight the second show. And I told you, I said, the only thing left is somebody getting shot, bro. <laughs> These crowds are getting rowdier as the night goes on. I can't imagine a third show at Riddles. The bad part is it was in the, in the nice neighborhood. It was in Orland Park, Illinois, where literally... The criminals tried not to go out that way, but I knew it was getting bad when the police, uh, I was leaving one night and they're like, so you run this night? And I was like, yeah, it was like a, one of those weird ass uh, old nineties movies. So you run this night, huh? And I was like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> you should call it death comedy jam. I said, death, what? The what? Fuck? <laughs> death comedy jam, death comedy jam is many. And it was, it was bad, man. They would, they would run plates just to be out there, but all in all comedically, you had to be strong if you came to that room. I mean, Riddles was, Riddles was like the Apollo. The Riddles would boo the hell out of you. It, 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 for it to supposed to be a nice area, a nice comedy club, the crowd itself was crazy. We had the white T-shirt crew, and we didn't allow white T-shirts. So those brothers, man, they they pay like $100 just to sneak through the back door with a white T-shirt on. Because we knew if you got a white T-shirt on and you're a nigga, you came to fight. <laughs> well, that's a, I was talking to Rel about that, and he was like, I said when D-Ray calls for shows... Uh, one, you're gonna give you're gonna give somebody a guilt trip, but two, I all your shows are always crowded. I've never been to a D-Ray show. Where, remember you you brought we had the Shack tour in 2012, and they canceled Minnesota. Yeah, you remember that? And then you was like, nah, I just want to do. Why did you do that? You brought you basically okay for those who don't know. We had the Shack comedy tour, and we were we did like 30 cities in the fall of 2012. For some horrible. reason, Minnesota got canceled. I don't yeah. know why it got canceled. And and then you was like, no, nah, I, I want to stick. I want to keep Minnesota. We're going to keep it. And you put up your own money to bring the same lineup with the same Shaq tour to Minnesota. Why? I don't understand why you did that. Well, well, one, I don't like I don't like quitting. I don't like I hate canceling shows. Like even during this this virus thing, I was like, man, we still got shows. People are buying tickets. I like to give up, um, give people what they ask for and pay for. But I like challenges, man. And in our case, it wasn't one. It was it was a it, it was a no brainer to me. I had I don't think I had been to Minnesota like that to that capacity. I don't think I had ever done a theater like that. It was a state theater, I remember. And I looked at the lineup like we can't lose. It's me, you. I forgot who else was on the show. Corey Holcomb. It was like a Michael a Blackson no, and Capone. Michael, Michael Black. It was a no brainer to me. That show right now is a tour, and I already saw that. I knew that we could pull it off. And I literally, it, it, it was set up already. They had, the, they had the Facebook page going. They had everything set up. And they're like, we're going to cancel that. And um, only one I didn't pick up was the uh, Kansas City was after that. And I didn't grab Kansas City. Mm. But, um, but Minnesota just made sense, man. And I, I knew we could all do it together. I cried that night, too. I made no money, but I cried because we had pulled it off. And, I, and that was before. I think that's one of my first bigger shows that I started doing. Like, that was successful. Cause I had been like, I tried to do like outside St. Louis and I tried to do Peoria before. And you know, when you're leaving with like a thousand bucks in your pride and I had lost uh crazy money. I remember doing Tennessee state university. Uh, I think you're, you're on that flyer. 
I did. What I do with you? I did um somewhere in Illinois because we I, we flew uh, to Chicago and got in your van. We always in a van right into the show. Oh, okay. I thought you did Tennessee State University. Uh, I was looking at the flyer. This show I might have. So, this show was so long ago. I didn't have a picture for Scrancho, so I used Kevin Hart's picture. <laughs> Nobody knew the difference either. Nobody cared. I did not have. <laughs> I could not find. I did not have a picture for Scrancho at all. So I used Kevin Hart's picture. I just saw that damn flyer. Oh man, now, that was hilarious. Now, were you were you roommates with Kevin? I was. I thought I, I thought that's I remember that correctly. So you and Kevin Hart were roommates. Like what years? Uh, right after Aspen. So whatever year that was. This is the Aspen Comedy Fest, right? Was that what two thousand one then? Yeah, it had to be like, was it one or two? Maybe oh two. How long did you guys live together? Kevin was in and out of here for about, uh, um, okay, I'm just going to say two years. <laughs> two years? <laughs> I'm going to say that because Kevin left, Kevin was gone, and then Kevin was semi back, but Kevin was gone. <laughs> like leaving LA or just staying somewhere no, else in LA? No, like somewhere else in LA. He moved out and they were up the street actually. <laughs> he was still here. It's it's funny like looking back on cuz I think I was talking to this about Tiff last week. We talked about comics beef. But you know, it, it, by the way, that's why I knew Kevin was so smart though cuz Kevin had just we had all got deals that year. And I'm the only idiot that was like, I'm gonna pay all this rent. Kevin was like, "Man, give me a room somewhere." Putting his money up, saving his money, Jesus. Oh, you talking about? Okay, people don't know TV deals. A they TV used to deal. give out. I'm sorry, yeah. They used to give out TV deals to comedians like no other. With for for I got, six figures. I got what I get three hundred and seventy five thousand for one year. For what network? It was ABC Touchstone. I remember. I remember that. I remember seeing that in the trades. It's ABC touchdown, I, and they gave you gave me another fifteen thousand to move here. I took that fifteen thousand and bought my house in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the craziest. Let me tell you the craziest TV deal I ever got was with Quincy Jones. Uh, now Quincy Jones saw me in, in Montreal. Uh, the, I remember he wanted to do the, the show about you and the black wife and all. That's when his first was developing. Yeah. And he literally, uh, this is this is what's crazy. We go to his house, and he goes. He looks around and goes, "What? What will you settle for the deal?" And they said, "Well, one hundred fifty thousand." He goes, "All right." He grabs some dude. Dude came out of like the wall, right? <laughs> he comes out of some wall and just writes the check. Like there's usually you get when you do TV deals, it comes in payments or installments. Yes. They give right? you a good faith check first, and then they make sure you're not go, you're not gonna be a crackhead and disappear. Cause yeah. that happened a lot of times. I've heard so many stories of people just disappearing after they get that check. Yeah. Um, so that's why they start breaking it down. Then you get yeah, a check after you develop the uh, the show. You get another check after you develop the uh, the script. After you meet with your showrunner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking to people right now. That are like, what the hell is he talking about? Well, no, uh, it makes sense because what basically what D-Ray is saying is, let's say you have a two hundred thousand dollar holding deal with the TV network. They're going to give you fifty thousand off the bat. Then they're going to give you another fifty once you meet with the showrunner and and the script's being written. Then they give you another. It, it goes in all these installments right. and increments. It's almost like it's really like uh, sports contracts. Like you got to almost earn your money you hear he signed 100 million but 35 is guaranteed well yeah, you're, 30. you're one of the best white to black translators a black to white translators i've ever met in my life because that sounded <laughs> e that sounded clear to me and i was trying to say it. i sounded fucked up to me but when you said it it sounded clear again so yeah, yeah thank you yeah well well let me tell you quincy just cut the check he cut it. He was like, yeah, how much is it? And it was like, uh, 150000 He goes, all right. And he wrote the check out for 150000 right there. Like, I wish I would have cast the check and just saved it because it was like Quincy Jones Enterprises. Damn, and, you should have well, asked for more while they was writing it. Like, well. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> but here, here's, here's a great story about Quincy. So we're trying to meet with showrunners, right, to get this show off the ground. And, and at this time, Quincy's 89 years old. No, this is tw this is twenty years ago. God, not, that's crazy, right? right? So, so he was eighty seven. No. no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he calls me and he goes, he goes. He used to call me Snow Cone. So he'd be like Snow Cone, and oh, then no. he 
when I tell you, D-Ray, he would find me in like, my, this is when people had cell phones, but people were still calling hotels and shit like that. I was in mm-hmm. D.C. at the Courtyard Marriott, and all of a sudden, my my hotel phone rings. And it's and it's uh, Mr. Gary Owen? I said, yeah. He's like, please hold. And all of a sudden, Quincy comes on the line. Snow cone. I go, how, do, how the fuck you get my number? How did you always in D.C.? <laughs> so he calls. Loved. He says, yo, when you get back to L.A., we're going to meet with showrunners. Okay, so we meet with a bunch. We don't really vibe with any of them. Then, like, two days later, he calls me. I'm getting on a red-eye flight to New Orleans the next day for a show. He says, I need you to – or that night. He goes, I need you to come by the house. I got this showrunner to meet with. I said, okay, but I, I have, like, a 10 p.m. flight at a LAX. He goes – if the if the meeting runs long, I'll just I'll make sure I get you to um, New Orleans. So he was gonna fly me on a private jet to make the show in New Orleans, so I could get there if I miss my flight and not rebook mm-hmm. me on a commercial flight or anything. D Ray, I stalled that meeting. Fuck, <laughs> I was doing this. Catch twenty two. Devil's advocate. What about this? What if we make my wife Asian? <laughs> <laughs> just to get on that private. But I. I he, uh, the meeting was over. I couldn't do it. They was like, well, you got to go. You got to flight the catch. I go, fuck. <laughs> the cat- Gary, the catch is it's an all nude flight, though. You can't bring no luggage, and everybody has to be naked on the flight, even the pilot. Oh, and, uh, private? Oh, you're probably private now? <laughs> it's a private parts the, plane. The Corona? <laughs> Nah, nah, no clothes. <laughs> Everybody just got masks. Mask and gloves, nothing else on. Just dicks and titties out. <laughs> that would be a disgusting flight, though. What are you looking at? Ooh. Oh, can you imagine the frowns on a flight like that now? Like, <laughs> Oh, man. But uh, that's going to be interesting, though, because we fly a lot. It's going to be interesting to see what flying's like once we get back to working on the regular well the luck i don't know what it is about first class i don't know which ones you which first class you've been in but people feel like they can cough and sneeze if they feel like they like i paid too much money i used to oh, get like first yeah my seats used to be like um i like three i like the, the third c three f three a whatever always window i started getting the last one because i started feeling a little wet shit on the back of my neck after people sneeze so i knew i was being sneezed on and you look back mm. at them and they're like, that's a rich sneeze, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you better enjoy that. <laughs> you, you better be glad you, we even allow you up here. So I don't know, man, but I, I've always been, Gary, and people tell you around me, I've always had wipes. I've always had, I travel like that all the time. I have probably not, mm-hmm. I think last time I was sick was maybe sick, sick, like a cold for three days, maybe was four years ago. Wow. Which is how I know I don't have HIV. Ah, that's huge. Every time, feel, every time you do a healthy, blood test. Man, I feel healthy. <laughs> every time you do a blood test, the first thing you think I, of. I look good. I'm cool with anything yeah. else. <laughs> I'm cool with any high blood pressure. No problem. <laughs> All, everything else is cool. Yeah, anything else. Yeah. Just not that. Who's What's the most, okay. Who's the most famous person you met on a plane? Like you was, and had a conversation like, yo, you just randomly didn't know him. And just start oh. BSing with them. Oh, didn't know him? Yeah. Like, you just was like, yo, and then you start, like, just talking to him. I've had some odd, t- awkward moments on planes, because you know one of my things is uh, flying, I like to be the most famous person on the plane, just in case it goes down, they mention me first. Oh, smart. <laughs> because if I'm sitting next to somebody, and they they die, and they're really famous, they're going to be like, this person died. Like, for instance, um, coming back from Minnesota, it's where Jerry Seinfeld was on the same flight because he was across the street from us. Did you know that, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So Jerry, yeah, Seinfeld, yeah, they... so Jerry Seinfeld sat next to me on a flight, and as soon as I saw him, I was happy, then I was sad. I was like, oh, Jerry Seinfeld. I was like, fuck. If this plane goes down, they're going to say, Jerry Seinfeld and some other niggas died. Yeah. You're going to be like and Fair wanna... Fawcett. Right. I don't want to be some other niggas. So. Oh, Fair Fa- oh, the Michael Jackson Fair Fawcett? Yeah, she died. Dude, when I tell you CNN was like, Fair Fawcett died, and literally I think the anchor goes, fuck her, Michael Jackson died. <laughs> it's the first time oh, I think I heard somebody cuss on CNN. This just in, this just in we got a better death. Yeah. Cut to breaking news. <laughs> Sorry about Fair. <laughs> it's like, hold on, fuck her. Uh, Michael Jackson passed away. <laughs> That's yeah, we literally what I heard. News. Someone more famous, yeah, fuck that. So 
Uh, but I've sat next to a lot of people, man. Um, I think I've gotten uh, most famous is is some of the oddest moments, but never really famous because you know how I think, Gary. I sat next to that guy, um, the guy who does uh, what's the name of the show? Catfish. Yeah, oh, one of the MTV guys. Yeah, but it was before the show, before Catfish. It was a movie, and he sat next to me. We just started talking. His name is Nave or something. Neve, mm-hmm. Nave, Neves. Yeah, he's talking about. And he's like, I'm doing a movie, and he's like, I'm like, what? And he's just, we're just talking about the movie, and he's like, it seems like it's a horror movie, and he's describing it to me, but he's like, it's top secret, though. It's top secret, but he's telling me all this information, but he's like, it's top secret. And I'm like, oh, man, this is a great horror movie came out, and I went and seen it in this fucking catfish. Uh, but <laughs> I was like, is she going to kill him at the end? But I was like, she can't kill him, because I just seen this motherfucker on the plane. Uh, <laughs> But but I've never sat next to anyone who was like uh, I've asked Jesus. My stories are like so all over the place, Gary, because it's, it's so many flights, so many people. That's uh, like I thought you might have flew with Michelle or Barack or something like never. that. Some, somebody never, something huge. I, I wouldn't even know what the fuck it say. I sat next to Kim Kardashian on the Southwest flight though, coming back from Vegas. Oh, for real? Pre Kanye. Don't let me don't let me forget because I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you a funny airline story for me, but I don't want to forget the uh, don't let me forget the story about the um, the limo driver that picked me up on the way to your show. Uh, what was the game show you had? Which one? Mind of a man. Mind of a man. Yeah. Don't yeah. let me forget about the the driver that gave me the script and I got him fired and you made me feel guilty. Classic D-Ray giving a guilt trip. Um, but I, I remember Emmanuel Stewart, the trainer. They used to train like Lennox Lewis and Vla- uh, Vita- Vladimir Klitschko from Detroit. I have to see him, but I don't think I offhand I can't think of him. If you're a boxing fan, see, he don't have no tits and ass, so it's hard to think. Oh of. yeah, yeah. If you're a boxing fan, like I'm a boxing fan, I was like, yo, it's Emmanuel Stewart. So I sit literally right in front. I'm like in two A, he's in three A, and the guy sitting next to him, and man, I guess I heard I, I've heard Emmanuel's a talker on planes. Sure enough, he starts a conversation with the dude next to him. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, fuck. I go, and the guy, the guy was so gay, so not into boxing. And he's asking the worst questions. And I'm going, God damn it. Will you just, I want to get up and be like, just switch fucking seats, bro. Just switch fucking seats so I can talk to this man. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, so you're a, you're a trainer? And then he goes, he goes, oh, so you, I mean, like big boxers? And it literally Manuel Stewart goes, yeah, I'm, I'm actually in the Hall of Fame. And the guy goes, oh, my God, your parents are probably so proud of you. I go, he, he's 70. His parents are dead. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing you say to a 70-year-old. <laughs> oh, my God, your parents got to be so proud of you. <laughs> I was so you got, mad. <laughs> your, your, sto- your story, see, Gary, all your stories make sense. Mine is like, I remember this girl sat next to me, and she was like, if you're not going to use those fingers for your food, can you put them in me? Yeah, Wow. Never had that happen. <laughs> so I've had that happen. Uh, you had that happen? Are you bullshitting me, D-Ray? I swear to God. She said, if you're not going to use those fingers for food, you can put them in me on my way to Miami. And I was like, all right. Are you? You're fucking. What year was this? Uh, Maybe six years ago. Are you? Sh- so you're on a. Hold on. You're on. A, this has never happened to me, by the way. You're on a plane. I finger banged on a flight on flights about maybe three times of people I don't know. Don't know. Just it, that's flight. risky, man. Just that's so. Flight. No, I've only had one bad, bad, bad that's smelling. That's so risky, <laughs> D-Ray. One bad that's smelling, so, man. That's so. Did and you I look at go, the rest of the flight? And the, and, the, and the bathroom line was long, so I couldn't go wash my fingers. So it was settling in to the curve. It started curving a little bit. But other than that, I remember I met this other flight attendant, and oh my god, I'm just a flight. At, oh my god. Hold on, probably, are these flight attendants or are these people sitting next to you? No, people sitting next to me was the first stories, but flight attendants, I'm I'm about a good twenty up flight flight wise. Wow. Yeah, man. I've met some incredible flight attendants. I've had one sh- call me and tell me she was sh- pregnant. I was like, Well, you still flying? <laughs> <laughs> International flights? <laughs> it's crazy. That girl went on to be kind of famous too, but I don't wanna not famous, but famous in the world we live in now. So it's crazy. Oh, uh, okay, got it, got it. She was the doing like the in... Don't Rush Challenge? <laughs> no, like, like, yeah, no, yeah, that kind of shit. It might as well be that shit, but it's kind of crazy, man. Wow, yeah. 
Okay, so you, you never had a flight attendant tell you I can get in so much trouble for this. They don't give a shit. Well, uh, my it was crazy. My the guy that used to be my opener was a male flight attendant. He had some wild stories. About I had one flying. girl. I had one girl. I I, I I looked at her and I was getting on a flight. This is about. This is last year. I'm getting on a flight. This is but Gary. This is crazy shit. As I get on, I look at her. She's pretty she's nice body. Kind of pretty. Forgot what city I was leaving. I want to say Ohio. I was leaving Ohio, and I just looked at her. And I gave her a little smile, and I got on my flight. I landed in Chicago. When I landed in Chicago, she called my phone, Gary, and I said hello. She's like, "You just met me. I was the uh, I was the ticket agent." I said, "What?" I was like, "Yeah, I remember you. You're pretty. How'd you get my number?" She said, "Is this a problem?" And I was like, "No, no." But how'd you get my number? She said, "She went and got my fucking number out the the system." Wow. I've never had that happen. It was the craziest shit. Man. Got my fucking number. Never, didn't fuck her though, but she got my number. We're living two different lives, bro. <laughs> well, I, I envy your life though, Gary. I envy the, the beautiful family, man. And, and you, you don't waste money and you're a smart guy, man. You think I love fucking all these strippers over here all the time, cleaning up naked and this fucking chef over here, fucking she's. She comes from fucking sweet and I don't know half she's saying. All I understand is su- sucking sweet. I don't, I'm sick of this shit, man. Yeah, that's got to suck. Crazy. Literally. Man. You ever had a, bu- <laughs> you ever had to build fucking bunk beds in your other room just because bitches want to spend a night, man? It's crazy. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Honestly. The sad part is, do you, he's do you not know lying. how much I will argue about this- $100 in gas I just put in my tank, but I will spend $15,000 to have a, a a boat I don't even fucking own for a day. Nigga budget. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah, because so. you you go hard in the nightclubs. Ridiculous. Hard. I, every time I see you, you got a section, multiple bottles, and I'm just looking at you like, I, I, your like I joke, said in my act. Your, your joke was hilarious to everybody else, Gary, but me. I felt like you were talking shit about me that joke oh, you're was talking fucking, about the bottle popping joke yeah, people was fucking laughing dying and i'm sitting here going oh this mother oh we throwing jabs that's what but we no. do now <laughs> d-ray you gotta realize you're at a you're you're at a point in your life and you're you're famous enough and everything you don't need to pop all them bottles bro that you're you're meeting girls you just told me you're meeting girls on airlines gary, and gary, you're right you're it's, fine. Part of, it's part of the lifestyle gary I, I still think i still think i'm a rapper in my mind gary that's all right. All right. That's why mm-hmm. when when anybody ever sees me out at nightclubs or bars, I go, I'll go say hi to everybody at the table and section and might have a drink with you. But nine out of the ten, you're going to find me at the bar at, Gary in, a, hates, in a corner. Gary hates shout outs. He hates shout outs. I hate it. He hates so selfies in the club. He hates so shout outs. I'll be like, Gary, oh, and in the, I always shout you out every time. I always try to pull out my phone and get pictures. You hate all that no. shit. Like, no I pictures. I don't like it. I see Gary. I like, I like to blend a, in. Gary don't want no chicks around like that either, too. It's one time a waitress was bringing our bottle, and I pulled the camera out, and Gary threw the bitch. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he threw threw the bitch across the table. He's like, "No bitches, no bitches, nope." Yeah. <laughs> I think one night you said to me, "I don't think you said it on purpose." You was like, "I don't get no bitchers." <laughs> that means pit, pitches with bitches, no bitchers, no bitchers. <laughs> that's a that's a new new slogan. No bitchers, no bitchers, <laughs> no bitches, and no pitchers. I was never here. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man. Uh, no, but, goddamn. I'm fucking sweating. I'm laughing so hard, bro. God damn. I'm sweating just because I'm fat right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we was... Okay, we got sidetracked with the, with the, the bitches conversation, which is yeah. great. That was very funny. Which I, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe some men in the world still get distracted by women. That's crazy. That's I can't ridiculous. That yeah, should not happen that? anymore. should not happen. Well, I mean, it's like when you was talking about watching, watching porn. I go, I said, I will not disrespect my wife. I only watch interracial. That's it. I will never watch Black on Black. That's so all. Wait, that's not that's, me. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I have not watched Black on Black in forever, by the way. I think no one likes to watch Black on Black because it reminds, it reminds me of the time I walked in on my parents. That oh, wasn't my... I don't that, have that, that wasn't, And it wasn't my dad. I don't know why I even said parents. They've never been in a room together naked around me since I've been born. But 
But interracial is all the fuck people like to watch because people like mixing shit. It could be interracial animals. People are like, oh shit, is that a sheep and yeah. a wolf? <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Nobody oh, likes to watch. It's a weep. Everybody, no matter what people, everybody watch fucking. You can see. I walked past and seen two homeless people fucking, and I stood there for about twenty seconds. I was like, "That's a fact. That is oh, a he, fact." Oh, he's tearing that ass up on that concrete. You wish you had as a as a human. You wish we weren't as uh, you wish we were as open as animals. Because you know, like dogs, any animal will just mount and go. They don't care who's watching. They but no shame in. and just and hold on and make eye contact with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on. It's for, first time you have sex when a girl says doggy. I didn't know what doggy style was really. Like, what does that mean? So I literally just gave her a blank stare, like a dog. <laughs> what <laughs> like this? You thought that was doggy? You was on top of just looking at you know, it. You, you see dogs they to put their heads aside and they just look at you. That's what I was doing. I was like this. <laughs> I think goes, I think no, doggy no, style no, was, was the first position I tried. I think I ain't know nothing else. Oh, just so my, my my dad said if they look at you, they gonna get in motion. So don't look at them. So whatever else, whatever I could do to make them not look at me. Oh, oh, okay. Let's um. Okay, that's that's probably All the right. most sex talk I've had in five weeks. But that's Great. that's why I'm glad yes, you're on the show. We, we need uh, that, man. But what I was talking about earlier, I didn't want to forget. This is classic. D Ray will give you a guilt trip. So D Ray has a TV show called Mind of a Man on the Game Show Network, right? Yeah, game show. It was game show network. Yeah, yeah. I thought you broke. I thought it paused. I was like, "What happened to Gary?" No, yeah, I was asking. <laughs> so he's got a show. Gary, you ask Mel questions. You ask, you ask questions with a period, dude. You're so just weird as My shit. Fault. My fault. <laughs> you never put a question mark. It was on uh, game show network, correct? <laughs> <laughs> See how you had to say that? Is you that know. right, D Ray? Can you <laughs> yes, answer? That, that is correct. <laughs> game show network. So, so they. I get booked for three episodes, and you, you film all three episodes in the same day. Uh-huh. So I, I'm not lying. I get in the car, the town car, and the driver like literally turns around with a ski. It's a, a black driver turns around, and I thought I was in the movie Taken because he turns around with a black ski mask and goes, "I need you to put this on before we go anywhere." And I just went, "Oh, like literally, I was like, am I getting kidnapped?" And then he goes, I'm just bullshitting, man. And I go, okay, what the f- that was a terrible joke, by the way. <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't know that Yeah. Part. He hands me, he, he turns around with this black scheme, like, I need you to put this off before we go anywhere. And I like, I look at him like frozen, he goes, I'm just fucking with you, man. Then he, he hands me a manila envelope, like that He probably thick. thought about that. He probably thought that was going to be the best icebreaker ever, though. He's like, oh, Gary's going to crack up when I hand him this. Yeah. Okay. Wait to the end of this story. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so then... Um, keep in mind, a lot of car service drivers will get your number, and they call you, tell you when they're out front if you're at a hotel. Mm-hmm. So then he hands you a Manila envelope about this thick. It's got a script in it. It's got his info in it. It's got character synopsis. And he goes, "Yeah, this is a comedy script I'm working on right now. Uh, I, I wrote a part for you." And the whole time I'm thinking, "You're my, you're the driver. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? This is not the time." Then the whole drive, which was about 45 minutes to set from my hotel, he's telling me about this movie. And this, I didn't have earphones. I didn't have earbuds. I had nothing. I'm making fake phone calls, talking to nobody, so I didn't have to talk to him. So I get to the set, and I tell everybody on the staff, I don't want that guy taking me back. Any other driver, I don't care. I, 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 that driver cannot take me back to the hotel when we're done filming today. Long story, sh- long story short... The guy got fired. They fired him for doing that. And then the fucker calls me to tells me I got him fired. <laughs> he goes, and he, and he, he was I, like, I got that ski mask ready for your ass for real. Yeah, well, he, I'm on set with you guys. And I think by the second episode, I get the phone call from him. And I didn't answer because I knew that I knew it was his number. And he left a voicemail going, hey, man, um, I didn't realize I was out of bounds or I you know, whatever, didn't do my job correctly, but just so you know, they let me go because of it. So, yeah, you be well. <laughs> I was like, what? Now I'm in the makeup chair for the third episode. You walk in, D-Ray, and I'm telling the story how this guy freaked me out. He just called my phone, and you go, 
Oh, he had, you knew the title of the script. He must have gave you the script. You said to me, you was like, oh, he gave you that script about this? And I went, yeah. He goes, yeah, he gave me that script too. And then you went, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, snitch on him. So, <laughs> I was like, you're a dick. You are a fucking dick. <laughs> you literally went, yeah, man, but I ain't snitch on him. <laughs> I was like, this fucking guy. <laughs> then I felt bad that he got fired. <laughs> well, he didn't put no black mask out on me and shit. He must have thought that was, like I told you. Oh, man, I don't even remember who that. Is, did he have dreadlocks? Nah, no, nah, he was clean cut black, dude. But because he, he was, since, since then, there's been this Uber driver, man. And I ain't gonna lie, I, I'm close to Gary and his ass. Because every time I get in the car with him for Uber, he has his camera on. He's like, do you mind if I film you? The first time and I said, no, I want to be filmed. Do you mind? If, he said, I'm doing a documentary of everybody I pick up. I'm doing this book. And I said, you ain't doing no book and I ain't getting no fucking check. It's so about a fifth time. He bring me home. I was drunk as shit. I got out the car. I stumbled. I, I turned around to grab my bottle because I already sneaked the bottles out the club. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. Did you film me? And he said, I asked you. I said, you must have asked me real low, motherfucker. No. And he said, oh, well, you already said yeah. And the motherfucker pulled off. Well, here's, no. here's, where this, here's the problem with that guy. If he ever gets funding and ever gets it released, oh. he'll never be able to show it. Because he's not getting, oh. nobody's signing release forms. Oh, right, right. True, true, true. But so here's he's the problem just, with your guy, though. If that movie get made, he's going to be like, I asked Gary Owen and a motherfucker got me. <laughs> Watch him. He'll be like a new, a new Jordan Peele. Whoever, whoever the person, whoever the person is supposed to be, like, whoever, whatever actor you really like is going to get that part that he had for you. Yeah. <laughs> be, be like, Joseph Sakura got it? Yeah. I got it. God damn it. Tommy got like, it. And when he tell him, he's going to say, I can't believe. His interview going to be like this. I can't believe that Gary would do that. Uh, we should always support. Um, what what you say he said? He, he said he didn't want it because I'm black. What? <laughs> what? I was trying to believe this. Does he not reside with a black woman? Yes, I cannot believe this. Fucked up. <laughs> And then, then, gonna write say, up, then the person that they kill in the movie, his name is going to be Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Lights out, Gary. Look, Gary, the line, before they, before they kill him, they're going to say, did you enjoy the ride? What? <laughs> That's good. They had nothing to do with it. And they go, hold on. They're gonna, and then the last scene is them covering themselves in a black ski mask. Let's ride. <laughs> Let's did ride. you enjoy the ride? We out. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that. Is, and then they're going to oh, draw. Hold on. Just... Anyway, then they're going to be at like a, a diner at 3 a.m. And the game show will be on. The t- oh, <laughs> 3 a.m. There is again. What? No. The character. The, the, the you know how they always make the last name like in the uh, movie? It's going to be like Gary No Good. Like Gary No Good. Yeah. Like, but spell like N O O. Gary No Good. Like, man, we got to kill Gary No Good. You're going to be like, that's. They're talking about me. They're like, the motherfucker from Ohio. He was in the search. It's going to be all your details. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. This is what we do, people, by the way, me and Gary, for no reason. If you were expecting us to be on track with something, it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't getting edited. And it's, it's not as edited. bad. This is not as bad as one of our phone calls, though, about like something we both upset about. <laughs> Yo, like, okay. When, let, let's address the elephant in the room. When you got mad at me, D- okay, this is the thing. D Ray's been doing New Year's Eve. I never get mad at you. No, you was mad. You was mad. D Ray, D Ray called, and this is D Ray. D Ray, D Ray has invented everything. Like there was not stand up before D Ray. If D, if Clearly. Richard Pryor was around, D Ray Clearly. would be like, Rich, Rich, you know you took that dude from me. That was my that was my joke. You took that, Richard. <laughs> about yeah. about being a prior, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was raised in a brothel. Really. You took my life story, Richard. <laughs> but so D-Ray does Chicago every year for like the last five years, six years. Does New Year's Eve in Chicago. And it keeps getting bigger. Now it's like he does. It started with the 31st. Now D-Ray does the 30th and the 31st. Then it goes to 29, 28. Now he starts at Thanksgiving and he does a month in Chicago. <laughs> at the Crown the tur- Theater. The, tur- the Turkey Talk the Turkey Talk so, Comedy Jam at the Every Crown Theater. <laughs> come get your, hey, hey, come get stuffed with these laughs. 
Oh, it's like this. You want to work off that turkey? It's the DRA work off that turkey comedy jam. December 1st to the 15th. Bring a bowl of greens. You get $2 off. DRA will hustle some some side charities and it's never going to see the money. So (laughs) What? I've never done that. I give money away like crazy. I'm kidding. No, so I've done I've done your New Year's Eve twice with you. I think I did 2014 and two years ago. And here's the thing: New Year's Eve is a huge day for all stand-ups. I don't Every, think so. All, I don't all, think so personally. I think it's just my show. I think it's only okay. big in Chicago. I'm kidding. Go. Okay. <laughs> I was like this. <laughs> like there was no New Year's Eve. Nobody niggas was never counting down before I started <laughs> count. Motherfuckers they, they was count. Nobody motherfuckers was counting up before I started, <laughs> no. Gary. They were counting up. <laughs> I did the count down. Okay. There was like one, two, three. They counted up till it got to midnight, and I said, "Count the fuck down." No, That's no. what happened. We're going down. <laughs> Most of all, New Year's is actually twelve oh one. I started midnight. I started yes. midnight. That's that's D Ray. <laughs> so. So, like, there's some dates are guaranteed money makers for stand-ups. Valentine's weekend, money maker mm-hmm. for a stand-up. Uh, New Year's money maker. And there's no dates. Do not do a show Super Bowl Sunday. Stupidest idea Never. ever. I've seen people or if do you're that. Ever some, if you're ever somewhere, uh, it depends on where you at for like Memorial weekend. Memorial Sunday is usually a good good night. Memorial Saturday, no bet. But like, yeah. Uh, also, true. Labor Day weekend is a pretty good. But definitely a. That Mother's no, Day, yeah, and D, this all came from D Ray. D Ray invented Mother's Day. Like I did. there wasn't there wasn't Mother's even Day Mother's Day. Everybody said Mama. They was like Mama, yeah. Mom, and I said Mother's yeah. Day. I invented Mother's Day. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> right. Long as you D- D- gay, long as you starting to understand fully right now, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm starting to get it. Oh uh, my, hold on, wait a minute. How many letters does Jesus have in his name? Five. How many letters does D Ray have? Five. Five. It, it, identical. I'm just saying. <laughs> Before Jesus and Mer- Meryl came out, I was Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I have a T-shirt years ago, but I'm sure he's older than that T-shirt. But still, so here's where the beef comes in with me and D-Ray when we talk about comedians beefing. Uh, minor beef. Uh, yeah. So D-Ray, so I've been doing Dallas New Year's Eve for the last four years. Now, when I say I've done D-Ray's New Year's Eve show, I never done New Year's Eve. I've done the thirtieth. And then the 31st, I'll go to uh, Dallas and do my show. Well, my show starts selling out uh, at the uh, the Verizon Theater. Now it's just called the theater. So we added another date. So we do the 31st and the 30th. And, I, you know, as many comics as you think are out there, there's not that many selling tickets that you can bank on Agreed. that have a good name. So our the pool to choose from is so small. I mean, you got you got your Kevin Hart, your Dave Chappelle's, your Chris Rock's. Take them out. They don't need to be on an ensemble show. They can just put their name on a flyer and it sells out immediately. But there's those those me, D Ray, Lil Rel, Dion Cole, Lil Duval. We're that we're that pool that you can make money. Yeah. We sell tickets, but you got to promote us. You it can't just put D Ray on a flyer in the mall and it's gonna sell out. You can't put Gary on a flyer. You got to promote, and then people come out. Yeah, let people know so, that we're here. <clears throat> right. So I 30th and 31st, we make the decision we're gonna do two shows. Okay. So I start calling the same comics that D Ray has had in the past. D Ray called you called me like, yo, why you steal my idea? I go, I didn't steal your idea. No. Nope. <laughs> we just that, added no, a no, show. Gary. I'm not gonna let you, Gary, I'm not gonna let you do it. I'm told you earlier, I'm not gonna let you white me. That ain't what happened. Okay. Even Give your, your version. Your, your guy Allison said he saw how my show was working, and you guys have been doing the same show which you have been headlining. I my show with mixtures of comics. I've always done that since I started, and the comics I was using for the years. It's like there's a certain there's a certain um, etiquette to what we do as far as promoting. And mm-hmm. if I saw you doing the same show for the last three years, I would call you and say, "Hey, are you doing? I, I do it now. Are you doing the same show? I do it with promoters." Like Blake and I do it with some other guys where I call and say, are you using these comics before I, I reach out to them because they're used to using those comics. Um, okay. Like calling Brian Dennis before I use Mike Epps in Chicago. I just have to. So on those dates, I had been using those comics and I was successful. So it became like, okay, I can bank on this. 
And when I called, they were like, oh, Gary's Gary's switching up his thing. He's doing a mixture. After you did my show, you came, saw my show, and your show was successful, but the aura of my show, it looked good. It felt good. So you're like, I'm going to do it. Me and you could have had a discussion, Gary, and you could have done a day, or we could have decided which comments going to be on which day because it made it harder for me to book because AEG don't work with me. I do everything myself, by the way. Mm-hmm. Everything is bankrolled through me. Everything is spent through me. All the insurance is brought through me. So I was like, you being my fr- one of the few friends I have in the world, and you know motherfuckers don't fuck with me. That's a true statement also. Mm-hmm. You could call me and say, AD, hey, I'm going to u- use these guys on these days. And I was like, okay. But when I heard it, it's like heard a third party. I was like, what? Not Gary. He would hit me up. So that's why you got the D-Ray phone call. And we still, ju- I still talk shit. I was mad for like, 30 minutes i talk shit to everybody in here you was all kind of bitch ass niggas yeah but but here's and I, and I told you i said uh i told you i said well look man i'm gonna call you january 2nd so we can be friends again friends again <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it my show is successful your show is successful but end of the day but that's why this I, is, tra- is this is one of my, my biggest defense, here's my, my defense i'm not disagreeing with anything you just said in my defense all we did uh, on my end uh, was we said hey we're gonna add a show the 30 and 31st they said they gave me a list of comics and how much they're asking for and does it fit into the budget and i just went i literally said yes to like 10 comics i said if you can get any of these 10 that fit in within our budget i'm cool i don't care what days 30 31st we'll mix it up only person i called personally was little duval for new year's eve I didn't want him on the 30th. I want him on the 31st because he's got the but song But still, out. you were mixing up. But you were mixing up the shows the way it was a mixture to it. Even Allison said it. But beyond that, this is the point. This is what we want to get to. Gary and I both have this hunger inside of us comedically where we always write, always want to be the best at what we're doing. I've always said I was the best, even on the nights when I wasn't the best. I just talk shit like that. But we know historically the way the world and America and people accept what they feel is the best is who they spend the money to go see. Not the funniest, but what they feel they need to see on those nights. And there's very few comics that uh, we have to we have to combine, like form Voltron, in order to to get to that that same selling same selling uh, thing that those comics have. Like a Dave Chappelle, you I, it has to be me, Mike Epps, me, you, everybody else to go. And not saying Mike is not on those guys' level, but. Uh, but the way the world views certain things. So mm-hmm. me and Gary have been talking about for years, sitting down, putting our money up and doing it. Yeah. But we stay busy and stay going to get separate bags. End of the year, we both reached our hand into the same fucking bag and right. came up holding hands like this. And that's what. <laughs> yeah, I, that's I, what mean, I, I, saw, I saw your point, but and I was trying because to stress you, want, you. Because if you want to trade, if I could trade two comics for you, Gary, like on some, if we're talking sports, I would have traded those two comments and let them go to Dallas, and I got you for those for three nights. <laughs> I'm not gonna say yeah. which comments I would have traded or which yeah. year it was to make it even more vague, but yeah, I would have done that. Yeah, I, I, and, Gary, I, and what I just did right now—that's how you say a whole lot of nothing within 30 seconds. Yeah, I have I, no listen, idea what the fuck I just said. I know, I know what you said. <clears throat> that was the clearest right. you've talked. That, that was clearer than fingering the three girls on a plane. Honestly, I really? got that bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm still trying to figure out who the other two were. But <laughs> now, now you got me Google flight attendant that got fingered by D-Ray. So, <laughs> but the book is. But out. what I was trying to stress to you when you when you called me, um, and it was never like some anger, fuck you, you ain't shit type conversation. It was it was two grown men talking on the phone about. It can't be. You're too funny for me to say you ain't shit. I couldn't talk nothing about your crap. So that's the funniest part of a real argument. You can't. But you can be like. But you could also be like, you know, there's funny people that that are dickheads too. I mean, I don't think I don't think you're an asshole. I, I don't think I'm an asshole. So the conversation was. I'm very was, much an it, asshole, but it's okay. Not to me. Not to <laughs> not me. Not you. No, not you ever. Yeah, I'm saying it was it was tense, but it wasn't like we were like I can't stand you. Fuck it, it's over. We're not talking no more. Blah, blah, blah. But I I, I, I try to tell you. I said, D-Ray, you've you're stressing over like your your shows are gonna sell out. Like you've you've established that, I go. You're to the point now where you could probably take a little off your budget and bring no, no, in more up and comers. And Gary, that always makes sense 
to some to like even me when I look at other people's uh, ways of things. I always think like that. But when you're invested the way I invest, it's like Jay Z's song. I treat my last like my first, my first like my last. I never know which show or which format is going to be the format for the future of funny. We don't know. We know when people get hot and this and that. But if you're used to doing things a certain way, like I still do hand to hand flyers. I still do. And they say, why are you doing that? We don't do that no more. Everyone's on the Internet. Everyone's doing. I still do the, the groundwork. So I'll never say like uh, or when we go to Houston and I do 13 shows and you do two weekends or you like, uh, oh, yeah, when you call me, that was funny, too. You call me, said, I heard you're doing two weekends uh, in DC. I'm the first person to do two weekends. That's pretty funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's how we talk shit. Anyway, that was, and, and, I, and I got the phone. I was like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's asshole but uh but i i still do even in those shows i still spend a lot of money on radio and it's not we don't have to i don't i'm not supposed to because they have their own radio budget but i still do it because i have that fear of failure and my fear my my fear of failure encourages my love of life if that makes sense yeah perfect sense. like me being fear Fearful of failing makes me go, I love life. I love living. I love pushing. I need to still do this. I need to still do this groundwork. And you're right. Sometimes we need to let go in order to jump into those theaters. It should be just me and you and take the chances the way these other comics have. But backing wise, we believe in ourselves more than an AG or a Live Nation for the full tour. Not saying they don't like when they put us on stuff. So when they offer a certain money, we're like, oh, no, we could go get we could kind of go get that on our own, yeah. but it takes the the effort of sitting down. So it's you're right; it, it might sell out. Like your show sells out, you know. When we go on our own and do a weekend, that's over a weekend in Houston. That's five thousand people. You know what I mean? I see you forty five hundred yeah. people. That's why it's funny too. You say five thousand people because uh, I was in Philly at the Helium Comedy Club like three years ago, mm-hmm. and we we sold out all the shows, and then. I got an offer like seven months later to do like a theater in Philly. Mm -hmm. And my agency tried to stress me. They was like, "Um, do you think it's too soon? You just did the comedy club. And as you know, comedy club fans are different than theater fans. All day. I do all day. And um, I told, this is what I told uh, UTA. I said, "Um, how how many tickets did we sell at at Helium? And let's just say, let's say 3,000. 3,000. I said, Kev did the uh, football stadium. There was 50,000. That means there's 47,000 people that pay to see comedy that did not come. <laughs> right. Hey, We're still good. Uh, yo, those numbers. <laughs> hey, those numbers are dope. I do, I do have a DC all the time. I go DC. I do two weekends. And then I do a theater a m- less than a month after that. It's like different people want to go to different shows. But yeah, man. Well, you do that with Chicago, too, because you go up and do Schaumburg. Yep. Right after. I go to Schaumburg. Right after. And I know... Because I know them niggas ain't driving to Schaumburg from Chicago. I don't care how close they say it is. Yo, every time I say, if I put out a flyer on the internet going, I'm coming to Chicago, I'm coming to Schaumburg Improv, I get more people saying, motherfucker, that ain't Chicago. That ain't Chicago. I thought, I'm after, like, I said, after I said them niggas ain't driving to Schaumburg, and I thought you were going to say, every time I say, I was like, is he going to say nigga? No, no. <laughs> D-Ray, I've been but in this business a long time. Nigga. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I was like, every time I say nigga, I'm like, whoa. Oh, oh, speaking of that word, this, this, is, this is really why I want you on the show, honestly. So we Thanks. can clear the air on this. It's so, been an hour. Now this is why you really want me to show. Thanks. No, yeah, yeah. No, but this is, this is what I, I – this is – okay, this is why I really want you. Whatever. Wait, again, D-Ray with the guilt trips. Always. It doesn't stop. Damn shame. <laughs> God damn, dude. Pack oh, that's your what bags. You wanted We're me? going on a guilt trip. <laughs> Pack your bags. Every that's time you see that, me. That's the name of your next special, guilt trip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you only want, you want two fingers, not three, lady? Sit next to me. <laughs> oh, so rude, right? No, but this, this this is my good finger finger. This is where I do my action. <laughs> my good these finger two? finger? My good finger this, finger. This is where my finger finger action happens. <laughs> not these two. This one. <laughs> so... <laughs> So okay, I, I, I just I just went and got another one of those things, the, the grip things to make my fingers even stronger. <laughs> okay, I'm out. All right, all right, I'm okay. out. All right, go. go. I'm sorry. So thanks, D Ray. This D Ray. D Ray took over my podcast. All right, Gary, go ahead. No, yeah, no. share your story. <laughs> so let's if I was let's white. You let's, in the let's do the time. Yeah, let's do the timeline. So right. 
I have a special come out in 2012, which I recorded in 2011 called True Story. And that special, my last joke is how I am not allowed to say the N-word. But I figured out how to. I can have my friends say it for me. Mm. So I set up this fake scenario where these guys were getting in a fight. And this guy kept calling me the N-word. And I said, well, I can't call back. So I had my friend uh, come on stage and say the N-word for me, a black guy. Killed, right? Yes. I'm watching, two years later, I'm watching this show called Chocolate Sundays on Showtime. And it's a sketch Pookie comedy show. show. Pookie Wigginton show, yeah. The show, it only lasted one season. And they literally took that joke and turned it into a sketch. And I'm watching it play out and I go, what the? And I've never, ever been the guy accusing people of stealing jokes. Because I know comedians, our minds think alike a lot. There's only so I many. I am. I always you will. Know if, if something sounds too much alike or some sound, even if I fuck up and slip, I make sure that I, I, I narrate to myself the mistake and how it was made. Like, and, I, and then I address it. But... I've always said this for the new internet guys and everybody who, who you have to make your own platform. I understand that. Much love to everybody who's even building something from doing that, especially the ones who really become comics and dedicate themselves to the craft. But you cannot take someone, someone did this to me, Gary, and not like to your level. That's huge. But this guy got like 3 million views on fucking Worldstar. He took something from Powerplay, a joke, and he said it in his car like he was ranting. He was like, my boy in the club, he did my joke. And I was like, and this is right when uh, uh, maybe a year after Q died and I commented on it. I said, this is what world star is. Now you just take people's jokes and we don't have a guild. That's one of the problems. Yeah. We don't have a writer. We don't have guild. a guild where a, a guild where we wrote our material. And if you use it, we get a but check that, every time. Like that's, music. A, that's a little different because you're talking about somebody that's probably not a comedian thinking nobody saw power play, but me, yeah. I'm talking about when comedians accuse other comedians. Or yeah, things. I can understand you, but the platform I, yours is, is, is terrible. The what? The platform is just bad. Like, they should, someone, if those guys who did the skit did not know, someone should have known. Oh, they, they knew. It. They knew. Here's the thing. Here's where it all goes left. So, I'm watching this show called Chocolate Sundays. I see my joke from my special, uh, and I'll tell you where D-Ray comes into play in a minute. Uh, and they took it verbatim. And just turned into a sketch. And I went, they had a, a white guy that owed another, a, a, a white guy owed a black guy money. The black guy came, where's my money? And then he said, chill out. And then the, another black guy said the N-word, right? I'm watching it going, no way. I called Pookie on the phone when I saw it. I said, Pookie, uh, why didn't you guys just, all you had to do was call me? I mm-hmm. would have said you could do the sketch just say based on a joke by Gary Owen. Or, I said, I would have told or, you. Or, or should have had you play the person. Right, exactly. So I told Pookie, I said, Pookie goes, man, well, we have a think tank. I said, listen, just tell me who wrote the joke. Who, it's a, if you're telling me you got writers for sketches, who wrote that sketch? And I know, where to, I know who to call. He right. couldn't tell me. He could not tell me who. He, the, Pookie said, we have a think tank, Gary, and we all sit around this think tank and we come up with the sketches. I go, who was in the think tank? He could not give me a name. I go, who wrote the goddamn sketch, dude? He never, <laughs> an- he goes, <clears throat> he said, what do you want me to do? I said, there's nothing to do now. I go, but God damn, man. If you're gonna put a sketch comedy show together, I said, get some original sketches. Don't take jokes from other comics. So the show only lasted a, 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 a season. Then the goddamn bit went viral on YouTube, they posted it like two years later. The Laugh Factory's website posted it, and it went viral again. And the goddamn, the Laugh Factory and the white dude that played the sketch. I don't know. You. They built, no, yeah. <laughs> the white dude that played the sketch, they they would say before people start commenting, they go, and before you say anything that this bit was stolen, uh, we filmed this in 2013 or 2014. I go, Okay, my special was filmed in 2011. Right. So here's where D-Ray comes into play. D-Ray was there when the joke was written. And let me tell you what happened. And D-Ray, you was there, so you know. We're at at the improv on Melrose. In like 2008 or 9, D-Ray does Monday nights there. And 
I got a heckler. I had a, a black dude was heckling me, and I said to the black dude, I said, man, if I was black, I'd call you the N-word right now. And the crowd started laughing, D-Ray being the antagonist on the side of the stage, say it. Say it, Gary. I dare you. You can say it. I said, motherfucker, you say it. I think it. I just saw the tape with that. I just, I got the. You I sent me it. You, oh, and I'm yeah. saving it. I'm going to make a post. I'm going to, you know what? After this podcast airs, I'm going to, I'm going to post a post on my Instagram page. But you sent me the tape of the night it happened. That's crazy. And I said, well, goddamn, D. Ray, you come up here and say it. And you came up and I gave you the mic and you said it. And then I started saying, yeah, now what? And then you would yeah, say it. And uh, I was, yeah, blew up. we can do it. Like, now what? By the by the third time, I'm going to tell you when it was, when you, you were already working toward stardom or whatever comedically. But by the third time we were at, on accident, we were at, uh, uh, your wife's, OG, we had the, the, the comedy store. Comedy store. Yeah, Sunset. And when, when we did it there, it was a wrap. I was like, Gary's gone. I was like, I need a joke like that now. I need a yeah, joke, joke like hit. that. Because like, we started to do it. Yeah, that like, third every time, time, it was a fucking er- wrap. We did it at a theater one time. We did it on oh, the Shack the- Tour. No, we did it on the Shack Tour. Uh, but that's the thing. Like, the joke was so organically written and came about just like, uh, cause I got a heckler and you was there that night. And then we, that's, it's funny. We, every time I would see you, I'd just be like, Hey man, let's do the joke. Like every time I would see you, I'd pull you aside. Hey D-Ray, let's do that joke. Like, and we go yeah, up and like do it. LeBron Wade, the, the alley-oop is coming. Ex- like no matter exactly. what. Exactly. And then, and then we went on tour. That's how we closed the entire 2011 Shaq tour was that joke. And, yeah, and then when I saw it, I went, there's no way. And I guarantee you. Who was the guy who said before you said who said before you say it's stolen? Who was that? What do you mean? You said someone said before you said stolen. Oh, the the white guy. His name's Bill something. He says it like he says on on the comment pages. Like when when he when they they just they posted it a couple years ago and then they reposted it and they on like Instagram or something. He goes and before you guys start saying this was stolen. We did this bit in 2013 or something and, like that. But and you know me, I'll go on the page in all caps, it's stolen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the laugh factory will say the same thing. The laugh factory is like, it's not stolen. That was just a stolen joke. That was, there's no way. And the fact that Pookie could not tell me who wrote it. And to this well, day. Well, Pookie, I, I, just every- you know, Pookie, Pookie is beyond a businessman. Even if he was in the, which I doubt he was even in the room when they did it. He's just like, right. that's funny. I doubt if he was even in a fucking room. Um, but he I not- think he was covering. I think he didn't want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not like I'm going to go beat somebody's ass, but I just wanted to let somebody know, like, yo, you know, that was my joke, right? Just so yeah, you know. know. And he, I mean, he loves, he, he don't want you not to come to his room. So he wouldn't do nothing. To, he knows it, longevity is everything. So, but, yeah. But he has to acknowledge it like that because I used to call him all the time with uh, one of the comments. I don't want to get into it because the guy's doing good now. We haven't crossed paths in a while. But I used to be like, this dude is doing my whole style. He's talking about this and that. And he don't even have that. He don't even live that life. Like, this dude is married. Up there talking about bitches. This, this, that. Like, that ain't how he talked before I got here. But Pookie would protect him like, D, that's not going to step on you. You're going to be you no matter what. So, But that's definitely one yeah. of the cases of, of the stolen missing joke. That was yeah, that the, was that, like that joke. That joke just was definitely was on first forty eight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest, with you, that's the only time I have ever just said that was stolen from my act. Ain't it crazy watching something though? And your face probably was like, I wish somebody would have filmed your face. When oh, she was right. like, this, this the face I, right here. Like, mm, what the fuck? Hold on, Wait. I had to watch it again to like, to did I just sense. see that? <laughs> it went this way. My head went this way to this way. We go to the back of the TV, make sure it's plugged up. Somebody <laughs> fucking <laughs> Am I getting punked? Is somebody in my house right now? <laughs> that would be hilarious, yeah. Oh, shit. And then, uh, but that's what got me. When he couldn't tell me who wrote it, that's when I went, Pookie, come on. You're telling me you're executive producer of a, and you can't tell me who wrote the joke? He, I on, ain't man. snitching. I ain't no snitching. Th- that's what that was, yeah. <laughs> no I ain't snitching. no snitching. You got me confused, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if you came at me hard. What? What you get? Yeah, we took it. What? What? <laughs> Thanks, uh, okay, motherfucker. Well, <laughs> jokes get <laughs> yeah. took. Jokes get That's took every it. day, B. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. D-Ray, if, knowing you, you probably thought 
Black Panther was yours. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck, I said Wakanda in 2006. Yeah, I, I've been saying it forever. <laughs> but I do know about five, six black actors that said they was going to do it. That's what's funny to me when I when I see it, when I seen it. And I was like, this ain't one of the, the niggas that told me they, they had the part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't Tyrese. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> speaking of, you called me. Okay, speaking of Tyrese, that's funny. Everything you say, just this is how far we go back. Everything you say, we got a story about every name. <clears throat> God, you got me laughing so hard, I got need some water. No, uh, you called me saying, could I stop talking about Tyrese on the internet? You remember that? Yes. I was like, what? I said one thing about him. <sighs> And that was and, it. And he called me. You better talk Why? to your homie. Listen, talk to I your like... homie. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> talk to your homie. Tyrese always call you with a uh, he, deep voice first. He'd be like this. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> talk to your homie. <laughs> what? Talk to your what? homie. Any, any, any issues with any comics? People always hit me up like, you better talk to your friend. I forgot what you said, though, but I was like. Uh... You, no, you called me. And you said, hey, man, could you stop talking about that? I said, I haven't, what are you talking about? That was like a year ago. I sent a tweet out. Here's the thing. I put, I said two things about Tyrese on Twitter in my life, right? And honestly, I've always liked Tyrese. I like, I've never done anything wrong. Oh, one time he kind of fronted me at a party <laughs> about it. But I said, I went and saw the Transformers. I said, I kept waiting for Tyrese to give the Decepticons relationship advice so they could get along with the Autobots. <laughs> Is that what you wrote? That's what I said on Twitter. I said, I just saw the Transformers. But why did, you, why did, why did it hit? I forgot why, why it hit. Uh, was he going no, he, through it? He got mad because... this. Uh, that, he didn't get mad at that tweet, I don't think. He got mad at the tweet when I said, if, if Tyrese is such an expert at relationships, why is he divorced? That's why I got mad. Oh yeah, yeah. that that hit. But it's this Tyrese, man. It's this. But here, here's where he got me though. Here's where he, he got me too, man. You know, for comedian to admit, admit he got got, Tyrese got me because we're at a. You know, it's fucked up. Before you say this, you know the fucked up part is that if you were any other comic, I always say this. I talk about it over here. Certain shit we just can't say, me and you, and it has to do with your height and your weight. You six yeah. two, you two thirty, you too big to be. You like if you do. Michael Blackson says what the fuck he wants. I'm people like <laughs> Ty Tyrese, do whatever you bitches stupid. Like and, and, and they laugh about it. But when we say something, I know why it's taken so fucking real. Like it's like we really mean it. We not. Yeah. They say it like we Charlemagne the God. <laughs> we say it. Well, I, I think that's that was my issue with Tyrese. Was I was like I, when I when I sent the tweet out and the the, the, the Transformers tweet right. And then uh, I was like, in my brain, I was like, why is he getting upset? I'm a comic. I'm just giving him shit. I don't, you know, I don't mean nothing personal by it. But I was like, that's what I was saying. Like, if Kev or Chris Rock or Chappelle said it, he would laugh about it. In my eyes, <clears throat> I looked at it like, oh, I'm, he's looking at me like I'm less than him. I don't have a right to talk about Tyrese. That's how I took it, whether I'm right well, or wrong. I, I took it as he that's just he just gets emotional, but especially during that with, with the he values like being married so much and it was like it was it was a lot with that like i i, I remember because he wouldn't have hit me if it didn't bother him he wouldn't have hit me but I, yeah. I forgot what i said to you i was like yo man you not put that tweet out no more yeah you said oh, stop dude. talking about tyrese and i said what are you talking about i haven't said nothing no then, i didn't say it like that don't say it like i, I hit you like stop talking about tyrese motherfucker <clears throat> us us the r&b niggas of the world don't like that no oh, man, i don't know man. what you said but my um he got me at a party though, because he hemmed me up, and he said, uh, "I said, what's up, man?" And then I didn't know he was upset with me, so I I I don't know Tyrese, but you know we he's always been cool and cordial to me. Mm -hmm. So I just came up to him. I said, "Hey, what's up, man?" And he I'll never forget he had an L.A. Dodger hat on. And he was up against a column, and it wasn't a club. It was like um, oh, it was a La La party. It was like the premiere of her TV show. This is like nine years ago, um, the reality show she had. And he was up against a comm, his head was down. Was, he, it, raining, was, like, was, was it raining on him, like R&B? No, like no, we was inside. Was, was <laughs> we was in inside. Was he in a tub and it was raining on him? Was raining. Oh, okay. No, he was inside. But he, uh, <laughs> he had a Coca-Cola in his <laughs> <laughs> Product placement. 
He goes, sit, yeah, sitting, in a, sitting in a Fast and the Furious car. <laughs> then he said, nah, hey, man, I'm just real like this original formula. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. No, but he said, he just looked at I go, what's up, man? And I got my hand out, right? He gave me the most hesitant handshake. And I go, I looked at him like, is there, is there a problem? And then he goes, hey, man, I'm just real. And I go, excuse me? He goes, man, I'm just real. And I go, <laughs> okay. And he goes, yeah, man, you be talking about me on Twitter. And I go, no, I don't. I don't talk about you on Twitter. That motherfucker pulled out his phone and showed me the tweet. No, it. I went, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was his screensaver. He was like, this ain't you. Yo, when he pulled out his phone to show me the tweet, I went, oh, shit. <laughs> Literally, d that's when you got to eat it. I went like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think man. My, Tyrese, I went down a little bit. Goes, I was like. Tyrese gets serious about that stuff, man. But he, he do the same thing. Like, if you needed him, like, even now, after that, if you hit him up, like, yo, I'm doing this. I need this. He take care of stuff. He don't even he don't even say I took care of it. He just took care of it. I hit him one day. I was like, this is, I forgot. This had to be years and years ago. And I said, yo, how do I get a blue check on um, Twitter? I said, how do I get verified? He said, look at it now. While we was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was verified. I was like, shit, all right, thanks. Yeah. He's like, all right, out. That's yeah. it. No, but see, that's the thing. I, I hope one day I can talk to him again and just, I don't know, work it out. Because I, I hate the fact that we we run in the same circles. Like he's, oh, no, you no, know, he's, he's good. He, he, down, he down to work, though. He'd be cool. He just, he don't talk to Tyrese. He ain't like reaching out to nobody. I mean, being a family man. I don't even know if yeah. he's. You ain't going to run to him out here. He, I think he's in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that was it. It was just two tweets. <laughs> it wasn't like you should, you I was said, You should have said, I'm trying to get your attention, man. I'm trying to be in a group with you, and you never listen to my music. Yeah. <laughs> you should have well, asked, asked him if you listen to your music. She's like, do you listen to my music? He'd be like, what? I sent you music. See, this is all you see, right? <laughs> do you see me? Did you see the tweet of me singing Sweet Lady? Did you see put that? This, put no. This. You ignore all that. All you had yeah. to do is reverse it and then walk away. He Cause he's yeah. not gonna go look for that tweet. I added you in yeah. everything. Did you see how much I pumped black and blue? Did you? That's all I did. All I did was pump black and blue, man. Your latest movie with Deion Taylor. Yes. You missed that. I promoted that. <laughs> you missed all that. <laughs> nah, that was it. But that was funny. You called me about that. I was like, dang, this is serious. <laughs> D, D Ray calling. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's me, the comedic mediator. Yeah. We have another complaint <laughs> about Gary. Oh my god. Hold on. Pass me through to Gary. Hello, <laughs> Gary. Now you got what you got. You got your is your uh, your oldest daughter's in college now. Yes, that's mind boggling to me, man. Brooke, that's Brooke is in college. She's at uh, I know, man. She's at Grambling. Uh, well, now she's home. Everybody home, and they they sent me twelve hundred dollars back. What the fuck, I'm gonna do with that? Well, they is she was she already a freshman there? Or she's gonna be a freshman. She no, she's a sophomore now. No, oh, she's a wow. freshman. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. She's about to be a sophomore when they go back. Wow. So my daughter's yeah. going to A and T. She's going to North Carolina A and T. Ah, we perform down there all the time. She can't help. She can't avoid us. We gonna run into her ass. Nah, nah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> huh? <laughs> nah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I said she can't avoid us. Oh, at Greensboro. At yeah, A&T's we all, homecoming. Yeah, we always we always down there. So she needs to know all her uncles coming down there. Okay, as long as you say uncle. As long as you say uncle. <laughs> oh my God, Gary. <laughs> I remember Brooke, man. I remember being at your Gary. house in Chicago. Brooke is Brooke is older than you. Stop. I One. know. Two. I re- two. I, re- two I, I love a little psycho. I remember her coming on stage, dog. Oh, my God. Oh, that's right. She brought me on. Uh. She's changed, man. She was all about, like, my daughter was all about, like, uh, I don't know, the arts and being in front of the camera and all that. And then she hit about 14, and that shit went away. I was like, what uh, happened? No more. No more. Yeah, remember you brought she brought me on stage in Louisville in like 2012. Give it up for my daddy, Gary. Huh? <laughs> Yo, so we're D Ray. Okay, this is funny. D Ray's hosting the show. We in Louisville. My daughter's there. Kenya's there. My son's there too. And uh, she kept saying, "I want to get on stage. I want to get on stage." And you said, "You want to bring your dad up?" And she was like, "Yeah." And then she was like, "What do I say?" And you was telling her, "Just do what you want. Just say." Give it up for Gary Owen. My daughter walked on stage. So Tiddy Ray goes, uh, Gary's daughter's going to bring him up. And then my daughter took that goddamn mic and went, give it up for my dad, Gary Owen. Yeah, she was. Yeah, man. I, I no. did not expect that. I was like, 
Yo, your face was like, because she came out there so timid on the stage, like shuffling. That's one of those, those, that's one of those shows I wish we would have taped. God damn it. I wish I would have had that on I, tape. I might have it somewhere. If it, uh, I might have it somewhere. I got to check. I'm still going through stuff now, but I might have it. But that was crazy. She's, give it up for fun. She was loud. <laughs> she was loud as shit. <laughs> so, dear, what was the, what was the first movie you was ever in? It was a VH1 movie, right? Yeah, played. Uh, played. You and Craig Robinson, right? Craig Robinson. Yeah, I forgot Craig was in that with me. Yeah, we we were the, um, we were barbers that became the muscle. And then you you had one of your jokes in the movie, and I was like, oh, he ad libbed that when you said uh, you was like in a barber chair. You said, yeah, I got dark skin tendencies, and yeah, I was and like, oh, that's straight from his act. <laughs> not just that. How about that became. People say you act in dark skin after my joke, after I did my joke. Stop acting. You act in light skin. You act, don't act light skin. And I was like, you're talking about st- stealing stuff, man. I see that everywhere now. I see it everywhere, too. And I will say you were the first that I've ever heard like, say that. Oh, man, that's crazy. But I'll give you credit on that one. I'm just waiting to get in a position where, like I've been doing lately, like certain, certain jokes I made up that were, uh, we used to do this thing called, um, I think, I forgot what it's called, but at the end of our uh a TNT comedy hook at the end, we'd all roast each other. So it's basically roasting, but we called it something on that night. Oh, snaps. We just playing snaps. And mm-hmm. um we go on stage and we at the end of the show, we make up these jokes. And Corey Holcomb and Tony Schofield always had the best ones. But Corey Holcomb's was so unique the way he did it. He had jokes like, Your mama, I, I saw your mama sucking a snowman's dick. That bitch a snowblower. And um <laughs> And I had never heard jokes like that. So I went home and mimicked the way that he did it. And I made up jokes that I started seeing in um, joke books. Like, I made up the joke, your mama got one eye, one leg. Call that bitch IHOP. And I, after that, I seen that shit. I hear kids saying it. I was like, yo, that shit really hit. And I also um, did, uh, but they were based off that Corey Holcomb format. So uh, you, you, you tell me you was looking at joke books, taking the jokes? No, early I on? wrote, no, I wrote those jokes and they ended up in joke books that's how i knew oh, it was a really good oh. joke so i wrote the joke your mama got one eye one because you always wonder where does where does a stock joke come from like right. black man white man chinese man like somebody sat down and wrote this shit somebody mm-hmm. and i'm just happy to be the one of the guys is like I, I did another one this one go far, didn't go far but i said I, I caught your mother yelling in the envelope that bitch was sending a uh the bitch talking about she's sending a voicemail yeah <laughs> and i did another one against Corey. i said uh this is this don't matter now because people don't do this. Don't, don't look at magazines. But I caught your dad in the bathroom ripping up Playboy magazines. I said, "What you doing?" He said, "I'm tearing that ass up." But I just <laughs> liked that those joke. I liked that those jokes at that time were like I like the the fact of being inventive that led to like my shit is in stock now. Like <laughs> now, when did you know? Like growing up in Chicago, when did you know you want to be a comic and you could be a comic? I did. My um, uncle was a bartender at a comedy club. It was at TNT, and I walked in, and I saw Shay Shay on stage. It was the first comic. I had never seen comedy on TV. I had never seen Comic View. We didn't have cable. I had never seen Def Comedy Jam. I had never seen Richard Pryor. I had never seen anything comedy. I heard a comedy album before, but uh, my granddad would play it. But I, the first stand-up comedy I'd ever seen is after I'd started. I seen uh, Jamie Foxx when he did... Mary had a little lamb, whatever that, wherever Mary was. It was the Unleashed go, Tour, I think. Yeah, that's the first stand up I'd ever seen. Then I had to go back and watch Def Jam tapes. I ordered all of Remember, Def Comedy Jam was like, you can order it now, 1999. Yeah. <laughs> Comic so View, too. They put them that on, was, on yeah. VHS. So I, ordered, I ordered all those and I watched all of those. Then I was like, oh, this is how you write a joke. This is how you do a joke. And I watched Martin and all that, but I never. I went on stage maybe two weeks after um, I walked in my uncle's. How old? 10. I was 19. 18 going oh, on 19. 19. I just got, just got married. God, that's right. How many? You got married early, right? Didn't it last yeah. like a day or something? <laughs> it was some weird marriage shit. It, was, you told no, me it, was, about. it lasted a year. We broke up. Like we, we were together, but I mean, we were together through high school, then married for maybe two, three months, and then she was gone. But we were still married for like a year, but we weren't together. And yeah. this, I remember, I remember uh, years later, I was doing good, doing comedy, and she was like, "Hey, remember you said I could have all your comedy money?" I was like, "What?" 
Because I told her why we were together. Then years later, she's like, remember you said I could have all your comedy money? I was like, bitch, I meant then. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but she, she came to, she used to come to Riddles, right? No, that, uh, no, no, only Leslie. Riddles was Leslie. Oh, somebody There's, from your past Mitzi came up never, to me. Yeah, Mitzi never, I don't think she ever came to Riddles. Maybe one time ever, but I forgot, like, if she did. Somebody came up to me at either a gas station or a restaurant. I can't remember which one it was. And I thought they said it it was your first wife or something. That's how she, once I, she said I'm hi not, and she introduced I'm herself. not doubtful. Uh, my first wife's best friend, one of her best friends, was Damon's wife now. Damon Williams' uh, wife. Okay. Juanita. Uh, Juanita came to the comedy club with my ex-wife. It might have been. Might, might have been. I don't. I don't think this lady was lying. She had no reason to lie to me. Yeah, but Juanita um, was her. Juanita and her worked at a hair salon together when I was. She was real young. Mitzi had to be eighteen at the time when she worked at a hair salon with Juanita. But it's crazy, dang. man. Crazy world. It's crazy. Over you look with. at. It's crazy. You look at like all the years I've known you. All the years we've been doing stand up, and you know, I was talking to Tiffany about this last week. Is like now that social media is out there and you see all these comics beefing all the time and sometimes i'm just looking at these beefs and i'm going guys i want to work with everybody if i got an issue with you i don't want to i don't take it at the social media and at all because i always said this man i love to work and i booked i always booked comics whether they liked me or not whether they didn't want to they thought i was an asshole because i'm here to do comedy and as long as i'm not up there doing your jokes you're not doing my jokes I'm here to work, man. Like, why we got to discuss how much we like each other? We got we go home to separate lives. You got different problems. I got my problems. You got your problems. You might have family issues to deal with. I got my family issues to deal with on top of all of our bills. And now we're going to argue about, like, it's like, uh, I, I always wonder, I just stuttered for no reason, but I wonder watching that Michael Dude, Jordan, have you been watching it? The, um, the Last, Last Dance? Dance. Yeah. Did you see when, like, I, can Isaiah Thomas come to his house? Like, can they? Yeah, like I didn't. I never knew through all these years that they like it was like that. Like he's like, man, he was an asshole. Like he still, like it's people he still don't fuck with. Like damn, there's nobody like that that I think of. That I, you talking I about Jordan? That, yeah, Jordan can hold a grudge, boy. Yeah, man, man I can hold a grudge. I don't think Isaiah could put on some. Isaiah could go buy every pair of Jordans and they still wouldn't be cool. Yeah. <laughs> He could do his interview in in Mike's jerseys, and I don't think it'll fix shit. Yeah, I just don't understand because you know, like like you said, I, I want to work with everybody, and it's weird. Like all these internet beefs are so minor when you really be looking at it. Like there's no reason to be mad at somebody. Like, and I was talking Tiff, and I go, and like Tiff said it, you know, nobody talked about Tiffany four years ago. Nobody had an issue with her and how she right. acted, her stand up nothing now that right. she's hot and she's hitting now people got issues with her i go what what was that i didn't know people i didn't know people had issues with her she seems she, she, like she's cool with everybody right i'm I just talking about like like uh i'm just talking about i shouldn't say everybody like general public and then and then some comics like i was talking about when cat went after that time too on the atlanta radio station what did he say he was just i i don't i think he was trying to say uh it's disrespectful to so many other female comedians out there to say Tiffany's the funniest when she, you can't tell me a Tiffany Haddish joke. Oh, um, blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah. I remember that. Well, my thing is always the work. I respect those. Like, Tiffany, I feel like put in the work as far as becoming an actress, a comedian actress. She waited her turn. She'd been through hell and a half. She got a lot to bring to the screen. And I think comics are like, oh, she didn't go to the, she didn't do the New York runs and have to do. See, but I don't know her. I don't know what the L.A. hustle is to get to where she got to. We, you Everybody's don't know different. It. We don't Everybody's know that different. hustle. I know the Chicago hustle. You know the Ohio hustle where we had to the, 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 doing the chitlin circuit and all the stuff we had to do. But no one knows the true hustle what she put in. So I'm never one to say that. All I do is look at yeah. the work after, and I can tell who needs polishing. Uh, when she faces certain crowds, like I know she had the mm-hmm. issue in Miami, and I was a. a uh, from a promoter standpoint, something I would never, ever fucking do, ever, ever. I don't like yeah. battling Miami. I don't like bi- battling Miami on a regular night, let alone New Year's Eve on stage at midnight when everybody drunk. And you know what time it is at 12 o'clock in Miami? That's it's 8 six. o'clock. Yeah. 6 o'clock. And people are like, 
man, people got other so much other shit to do. So I just thought that's some do it. But I do like the way she addressed it, and I don't. Well, she owned it too. I mean, she you didn't gotta like have... run from it. But you gotta own are, that shit. As we always say, these are good problems for her to have. These are good problems. People talking shit exactly. about you. Great problems to have because when they stop talking about you, you no longer exist. I don't. I, I live for it, man. It's nothing like long. She all she had to do is stay getting funnier, and like every like we all do, just stay getting funnier, and nothing can stop it. Just stay growing. Like with it's the only comedians are the only job we in the world that you cannot, you, you're not supposed to get fired from. <laughs> exactly. Like there's no boss hey. gonna call you and say, "Hey, man, those last three shows, you're really slacking. You got two <laughs> shows left, and you're out of here." It's like, no, we can't get fucking fired. We got you know. It's not like music. You put out one bad album. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, you're done. Like, you do one we bad all... joke. You're like, I'm gonna try this joke again with a different part in a different part of another <laughs> joke, and y'all gonna laugh at it. So, and every, every crowd's different. Every crowd's different, man. So you'd be like some jokes. You'd be like, why did you laugh at that so that hard? That part. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. Setup. Why you laugh at that part? That's the setup, right? <laughs> oh my god. And you're like, oh, this is gonna. Or or when you think. Some is finna like, oh my god, they laughing at this. This last part finna kill, and it dies down. You're like, whoa, shit. Or the weird thing about a stand up is to to have a crowd and they go flat for a t- for like 15 minutes, and you're like, what what just happened? What oh, just yeah, happened oh, yeah, oh, for yeah. 15 you, you minutes? Chilling, you're like, I'm not gonna talk to you, especially if you're established and you used to wrecking shit. You're like, I'm yeah. not about to waste the time. I got four more shows to do this weekend. You Thursday motherfuckers, I'm about to get a Thursday show. <laughs> I'm like, hey, oh, go your Thursday show? Oh, my God. Here's what's crazy about stand-ups, too, is, like, if you do merch, if you sell T-shirts or hats or take pictures, you'll do a, you'll do a show where you fucking destroy the room. And in your brain, you're like, oh, I'm going to oh. sell all my shit. All my merch is about to disappear. And we'll sell shit. Then, then you'll have a crowd. Shit, yeah, then you have a crowd that's flat. And they'll buy everything. And they'll yeah, be like, they man, that's the funniest shit I've ever everything. seen. That was the best show ever. I go, I didn't feel that. I didn't you know feel what? that at all. Don't, I, I've learned this, Gary. I don't know if you've uh, 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 picked up this yet, but those people are so quiet, but they're having a, at the end, they're like, they had a great time. They actually came to see you, like just see you and hear you talk. They're not here to laugh. They can laugh or a TV shit. They're here to just look at you and go, I just want to I said, they're the guy who sit next to you. And they go tell all their friends, like, yo, we just had dinner with Gary Owen. Like, and they're like yeah. in a different booth. But yeah. I, so so that so that fan <laughs> shit is just it's just something else, man. We never understand it, but I love that we I can't wait to get back to it. I heard you earlier talking about offers are coming back in, and that's fucking good. Man, I got I got a I got a couple for mid to late June. And that's they're... smart. That's smart, because you give it to July. I think mine start in end of June also, but of course financially half full. Half full. I'm like, did they God. say they're doing half fulls? Uh, right now, I mean, it could change in a month, but right but now, they gonna, I got my my confusion is, are they going to sit them set like? I'm, That's the thing. If you got four people coming together, if they're coming in the same car, you can sit them together. So it doesn't. I don't know. Well, I need. Just, I need. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a bus to go get all my <laughs> pick up. All right. <laughs> it's a bus of a hundred and put them. I need them all seated together. Yeah. You guys are all together, right? All right, they together. I got another bus coming in a minute. They gonna all sit together. I'm so yeah, ready to get man. back on the road. Like, I, I don't. I'm not going stir crazy because a lot. I, I think comics, especially, we're built for this Corona thing because of course we spend so much time alone, anyways, in well, hotel rooms or first I getting say, to cities. I said that. I, I'm like, and rest wise, but I used up all my rest, dog. I used up all my rest. I fucking refell in love with my girl. All that shit is done already. Now I got to get the fuck out of here. Now yeah. it's time to go back to work. Okay, um, I mean, I get, I get, like, I understand everything that's going on, like, with, with, but I understand both sides of it. It's very important for us to be healthy and be safe, so no one dies. I get it. That's just like, but it sounds like the way people are taking it is like talking to a, a drunk person, and they be like, "Give me your car keys." They be like, "I could drive." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's you, my people. I'm under the. I'm under the thing now where it's like, dude, it's basically everywhere because now it's like, it's on your shoes. It's, it's in the air. It's, it's in your hand. Like, so it's everywhere. Let's just mm-hmm. say what it is. It's everywhere. If it's in the air, we're all going to catch it. I'm to the point now where like, let me just, let me just get it. So my immune system can build up against it. Or if I already had it, let me get tested for that. 
if I'm asymptomatic. But well, yours is I'm, everybody's in the house around you because you're a white parent. Uh, my daughters yeah. are in separate homes. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> All Black. across the country. Black. <laughs> Fuck you. d has got one state on lockdown. Well, you on lockdown, but my youngest, she can go outside. <laughs> She's in a different Yo, state. <laughs> that's correct. That's actually really real. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I met all your kids. That's fucking real as hell. What is... <laughs> you can't go outside. My little sister go outside. She's in another state. They're not on lockdown. Oh, all right. I can't help you. Your mom moved here. Your mom wanted to live in the city. That's her fault. Your, other your, li- ma- your mama got nutted in here? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's where you get nutted in. That's where you got to pay child support at. So if you get a girl pregnant in Miami, that's where you got to pay. The- it's, it's the point of conception. No, I don't know. I, don't oh, know. I have really? no idea. No, I'm, I'm making well, my- that up. I have no idea. Oh, I'm like, my kids are all over age. They're going to say, well, my son got conceived in Pittsburgh. He and my daughter more. got conceived in L.A. <laughs> oh, she get way more. <laughs> but we're still together. They don't get nothing. <sighs> They get more because they're still together. All right. Um, and here, I ask, I ask all my guests this. Uh, one actor or director you haven't worked with yet that you want to work with? Oh, that's hard, man. Because I, I, I watch TV all the time and movies all the time. So they're directors I had never seen until I started. I'll see them do something. I'm like, I want to work with this. Whoever directed this. I, I got a Google name. So so many names. But actor-wise, I would love to work with uh, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Like Why? The, uh, the way he, the delivery. Yeah. Uh, I, I love a movie with Jeff Goldblum and Vince Vaughn. Uh, yeah, Vince Comedically, just like, just, just, just riffing. Just, I want to feel that, that vibe. Just going back around. and forth? Yeah, it's the strength of the, the oddities. It's, I love working with odd actors, and and, they, and Jeff Goldblum has that 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 that, that rant was like you know you, when do I deliver? So it's like practicing um, in my best artwork. Uh, I'll say I worked with a lot of good people uh, dramatically already, so there's no one I'm like reaching for because I don't want to say Denzel. Everyone says Denzel, but of course you want to work with Denzel, and and but do I really like? Do I really want to be embarrassed? <laughs> like. Denzel would be like you almost be like a little nervous like I don't want to fuck up yeah, my line on this I, one like you know comedically <laughs> like I worked with you know work with Eddie and work with people and you work with people like uh, um, Woody Harrelson and, and you know uh, I work with Will Ferrell and comedically I work with everybody and it's like I know who I'm good around because I know if I cast if I land on this team I could catch the ball they know when to throw me the ball but I think dramatically there's still some actors I think are too powerful almost like super super powerful that I I, I'm just not prepared for director wise. Of course, there's Quentin Tarantino, whom other than everybody saying he say nigga all the time, right all the time. Yeah. I think art wise is great. Guy Ritchie, fantastic. Um, uh, Spike Lee, if if it's something like deep depth, like one of his older type movies, like a throwback type joint, like he did with his son. Um, I love those uh, to see his his artwork in, in those films, but. Yeah, man. I, I just, you know, I'm taking it as it go as it comes, G. All right. So basically, dear, you just want to work with white people, basically. Is that how I said it? <laughs> no, I didn't fucking say that. No, I'm just saying. Name no, a lot no. of white people. No, no, no. I named. Which no, is, I named. I named people smart. who. I named people who I liked before I thought about black and white. That's what I'm. That's what I. Oh, smart. Now Good I'm answer. in the bit. Now I'm saying I'm in the business. Of course, you wanna you wanna uh, propel our films and and make the make uh Frankenhood two. And shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I want to do those movies, and I'm I'm in that business. But as far as wanting to work with, um, I love Jeff Goldblum. I, I like Jeff Goldblum and Vince Vaughn. Actually, in um, I think I, I fell in love with both of the characters in um, Jurassic Park, and that's why I was like, I wish I was. They could put me in this some mm-hmm. kind of way, you know. When Vince Vaughn is walking through uh, Jurassic Park, and he says. Laura, Laura, something like that, and someone just yelling for the girl, Laura, and then someone says, uh, "No, that's 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 Jeff Goldblum." But yeah. Vince, Vince, wait, Vince was in it too, though. Vince he was in one of them. The first, not the first one. Yeah, I think he was in the second one. I think Vince. I'm almost sure Vince Vaughn was in one of those because I remember him getting chased. Uh, but I like lo- I like those characters, and it felt real free. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to act against a green screen and things happening like that. So I don't know. Yeah. As far as what like, about. You said Woody Harrelson and, and Will Ferrell, like with Semi Pro. Did you audition for that? 
Yeah, I did have to audition. Um, and it was, I'm glad it was comedy because if it was anything else, I wouldn't have got it. What, <laughs> so uh, I, was, I was not and ready. Where'd, where'd you guys film that at? Here, L.A. Oh, you filmed in L.A.? Oh, we filmed God. some in L.A. and some in, um, in Michigan. Because I remember we were in Pittsburgh. We were in Pittsburgh together uh, right when you got the part. I can't remember what we were doing. Was he at a college? It might have been at a college. We might have been in University of Pittsburgh. And I saw you afterwards, and you was telling me you got a part in this Will Ferrell basketball movie. I know, and it was the, the timing on it just was – I mean, it was a good movie, very funny, and the writer was – great i seen people walk around last year with my uh, my jersey on bb ellis that was pretty cool uh, but the time and will had just did seven fucking sports movies so people were like ah uh, all right yeah. i don't know but, man that's one of my favorites but no people start like, liking it later like when it, you know, it's like one of those movies that you run into later you're like oh i love Tommy boy I, I like it yo tommy yeah. boy yeah oh my fucking god when you that came out again? i was like ah when i watched it again i was like oh you know, shit that's funny you know a movie I can't stop, like it's new, but I can't stop fucking um, repeating the lines from is Good Boys. I haven't seen it yet. Oh my God, dog. I gotta it, see it that. Didn't, when I went seeing it in the movies, it didn't hit me as hard as when I've been at home, all the little details. Little Rel, yeah. everybody's funny. That's just funny, man. That's just funny. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I think I, I saw it on my queue too. I gotta, I gotta, I'll watch it. It, it, it ain't I no, what, it. It, it ain't no, uh, uh, who made the potato salad. <laughs> oh, here's a funny thing. Okay, so me and D-Ray did this independent movie 18 years ago called Who Made the Potato Salad? I think we shot it in like 10 days, something like that. Was no. it that long? We did one take. Yes, it, it was, was that long. It was that. It was a short-ass fucking shoot, maybe 10 and a half days. We did one take where I'm light-skinned on one, uh, on one part of it and I'm dark on the other because I had stood <laughs> outside all day and I got tanned as the movie was filming. Because uh, we did you film? We filmed in the warehouse in Pasadena. Yes, I remember. The, I remember having to get the rat traps for my room. Oh yeah, and then here's what's crazy. You know they were shooting a porno on the other side of that warehouse. Other right, yeah. And I tried to sneak over there. I mean, so I heard we're making we're making a movie called Who Made the Potato Salad? One side of the warehouse, and on the other and side they're doing a porno. They're, they're, the other side they're, they're making they're making Who Making the Macaroni. <laughs> Cause I didn't, I didn't know till some of the girls in the movie came at, came at, like went on break and was like, dude, the female bathroom was so disgusting. Cause I guess the porn girls is in there cleaning up <laughs> after shit all over their face. Just come out wiping their mouths off. They're like, yeah. So what y'all shooting over here? <laughs> what y'all shooting too? over here? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Is that by Vivid? Is that Vivid? <laughs> That shit wasn't no vivid. That wasn't no vivid set over there. That shit was fucking <laughs> vibrant. I don't know oh. what that shit was. Has and there? The have you ever done? Have you ever had a audition or uh, been on set and just dropped your line? Just was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Yes, I just I forgot. Out, I blanked out a lot of times, especially if you're going real good. I I usually blank out after a compliment, like that take was good. The next one, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, yeah, hell yeah. Especially doing it, it just happened to me on Snowfall, like, cause the director, she's very, uh, she was, she was just deep on really getting the, um, the action of the scene. And I had just got, uh, I had just got shot, and I come in after getting shot, and my character is very quiet, so I'm not used to um, having to make much noise, let alone fucking talk. So I get shot, and they're putting alcohol on me. And when I put that call me, all I give is a, I'm trying to keep it hood. I'm like, and she's like, so I'm, I'm, I'm going so I could um, get, remember my lines. I don't want to scream. So I forget them. Cause every time I scream, I was like, ah, fuck. I couldn't remember after screaming. I couldn't remember what to say. So I started going, I think there was the motherfuckers down at the, <laughs> and she was like, I need to scream. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get the fucking lines out. So I just I just cut out the fucking first line. But yeah, man, I've had I've had some I've had some dead moments, man. I've had some moments where it's just like just straight up out of it. Uh, oh I never man. I've never dropped anything on set, but I've I've dropped some auditions. Man. I've had some brutal ones. I don't think you know I'm a good I, auditioner. Same. I've had auditions so bad when I walked out of the room, I knocked back on. I was like, did my brother just leave out of here? I was like, Let me do it. <laughs> I'm like, he always does this. Let me do it again. 
and they're cracking up. They're like, all right, come in. I, I tried. <laughs> I, I tried that technique twice. Once once they were like, oh, it's okay. We're good. Thank you. And the other time they're like, no, you can read again. That was Robbie Reed. She was like, you can read again. But um, for the most I've part. I've had some. I've had some brutals. Brutal auditions. Fuck. Coco. It's, it's Coco's birthday party tonight. Oh, happy birthday, Coco. Way. Gary says, happy birthday, babe. She can show her face. She's allowed to said, put her face said, in real said, quick. Said, Say, you pop your face money. in right quick. Say, say hi. You don't look crazy. You don't look crazy. I'll say hi if you give me some money. He said, say hi if you give give us some money. One more. Say hi. It's down here. Hi. <laughs> whoa, she does look fucked up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, he said, whoa, she does look fucked up. <laughs> 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 Oh, that looks like Coke, not Coco. <laughs> looks, like, looks like Coke, not Coco. <laughs> she gonna beat your ass when she see you, Gary. No, I'm she sorry, box Coco. all the time. She whoop that all right, it'd be her and Tyrese just beating the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet <laughs> lady, would you be my? Tyrese is mad at him. <laughs> This is why you nah. get in trouble. This is why you get in trouble because you laugh so hard at the shit I, you I, did. I no, My you fault. laugh so hard at the shit you did that it, it don't it don't be as bad. Like it'd be funny, but not bad. You'd be like, ah, ah, ah. you'd be like, oh the motherfucker, you really That's how you it feel is. for real, motherfucker? Sorry about that. Uh, All right, man. I don't want to hold you up. I didn't realize it was Coco's birthday, but uh No, no, yeah, I love hey, I'm glad. Thanks for having me. This is this is her we present. Gotta do... Me doing your podcast is her gift. Oh yeah. All right, man. Well look, man, I will see you when this is over. I'll see yes, you on sir. the road. Next time I get on a flight, I am uh I'm not gonna look at the flight attendants the same or if a woman sits next to me. What was the woman's hey, the line? This I this how you know if they're 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 mine or not. When you go when you sit down, do this, like the Freddy fingers. And if they do it back, they want it. So do this? <laughs> Just do this. It's a reverse wave. And if they oh. do it back, that means they okay. want it. Just do it. Don't oh. ask no questions. Just do it. I want to see how it oh. goes. What did, what did the lady say, though? Remind me what the lady said? When those Which, fingers are done oh, the, or something? What if, you're not gonna use those, if you're not going to use those fingers for eating, you can put them in me. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm going to use that on stage. I'm going to give you full credit. Let me tell you what D. Ray Davis told me. <laughs> True shit. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later, man. Love you. All right, thank I will you, see man. you when Love, this is man. over, man. I finally made it. I did Gary's podcast. <laughs> yeah, fucker. Oh, I'm still on. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs>